It's Tuesday, July 3rd, 2012. I'm Alex Jones, and this is yet another original edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Strap yourselves in. Tonight, the U.S. sends a large number of warships to the Persian Gulf as the Iranian parliament drafts a bill to block oil shipments. Then, a Homeland Security report lists liberty lovers as terrorists. Are you on the list? Plus, a massive fraud is exposed by two Merck scientists as they claim the vaccine manufacturer falsified test data, spiked blood samples with animal antibodies, and say the Merck vaccine actually promoted mumps and measles outbreaks. The shocking court documents revealed. All that plus Washington DC investigative journalist Wayne Madsen up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And we are back serving up the antidote to the vicious cobra poison of the New World Order. Free humanity versus this 1984 system. The spirit of 1776 versus the system of the New World Order. And we all know heart and spirit and passion and goodness will overcome this control freak grid. Again, Wayne Madsen coming up. A big 50 minute, 50 minute Ask Alex Jones, because there were so many questions and they were so good. In fact, that's going to air after the news, or is it coming up after Madsen? After the news and then Madsen. So, hey, we're busting our butts here over two-hour transmission. Was it going to be two hours, 20 minutes or something and that we've got budgeted out here? Let's move to the news and video clips very quickly here. U.S. sends a large number of warships and planes to the Persian Gulf. They're also sending, I say there, because the globalists, the bankers have occupied us, into the Mediterranean to menace uh, Syria following a move by Iran to uh, blunt an EU-imposed oil embargo that went into effect on Sunday. The New York Times reported that the Pentagon has moved significant military reinforcements into the Persian Gulf to send a message to Iran. So big escalations ahead of an October surprise for Mr. Obama. Now, stop, stop the uh, presses here because uh, a rights group funded by the globalist uh, says Syria might be torturing people. And you know what? I don't like governments. They're usually corrupt and evil. They, they might be torturing people. What is that, like a video on YouTube that comes out every five seconds of a cop beating somebody? Should the U.S. be invaded because cops are beating people with, with clubs? I mean, hell, if that's the case, I've been beat up before. Maybe we should have an invasion of Austin. Uh, but, but, but again, they say because there might be torture. Well, wait a minute. I thought the good guys, Jack Bauer tortures. I mean, they torture little kids at Abu Ghraib and Camp X-Ray and kill them. I mean, so should we be invaded? Oh, by what? The UN? Or I'm of the same bankers? Again, this is a new world order we're dealing with. So uh, there is that, uh, you know, conflict of interest there, that hypocrisy, that oxymoron, that paradox, whatever you want to call it, of having that. Now, let's look at who the police and military are being taught are the terrorists on this eve of July 4th. I remember 12 years ago getting manuals that the FBI uses. It made national news at the time. They confirmed it was there saying, if you stop somebody, they mention the Constitution, they're a terrorist. Or if they've got to get us out of the UN sticker, they're a terrorist. Uh, or if they talk about freedom, they're a terrorist. Or if they talk about the Second Amendment, they're a terrorist. Uh, I mean, they're just a terrorist. If you don't love absolute tyranny, if you don't love Kim Jong-il in North Korea, you're a terrorist. If you like living like they do in North Korea, you're a good guy. But it's, the, it's, it's diametrically opposed, 180 degrees from what our republic was founded on. Doesn't mean our republic ever reached what it was founded on, but it came somewhat close and made more wealth and freedom than any country ever saw. So we're now a bunch of decadent slobs. That's the byproduct of it as we go back into bondage. But that's the cycle of history, the prophets, the Bible, every culture, we know it happens. We're just here so folks know when we collapse why it happened so we can go back to what's good. And now we're just trying to salvage something. But here's the latest article up at InfoWars.com by Paul Watson. He has links to the report. Homeland Security report lists liberty lovers as terrorists, Americans who are suspicious of centralized federal authority, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, reverent of individual liberty. Ooh, that is nasty. <laughs> reverent of individual freedom. Everybody's like, get rid of the individual freedom. That's a really good idea. Uh, deemed domestic threat, because you're not just drooling watching America's Got Talent. 
you're not drinking your fluoride, taking your Prozac, and you're not having kids having you know seizures from vaccines. You're the enemy. You're not quietly dying. Uh, entitled Hot Spots of Terrorism and Other Crimes in the United States, from 1970 to 08, it's just now been leaked, uh, they go on. They got paid $12 million to write this for Homeland Security. $12 million. Nowhere does it mention the vaunted Muslim extremists, because they're being used by the globalists to invade all these countries, Libya and Syria. I mean, I could republish a Homeland Security, uh, ADL, Southern Poverty Law Center. I can always tell when they've written it, because it's just the same thing. It's super lazy. You set up a group that operates as official experts, like the uh, Media Matters, that meets with the White House and gets funded by the Democrats, and then they're like, this guy thinks there's a world government. He's probably violent and evil. Meanwhile, back to CNBC. Aren't we lucky there's a world government run by bankers? Yes, we're their slaves, but they know what's best. Back to Alex Jones. You know, the latest uh, intelligence report by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Oh, Alex Jones is very evil. He thinks there's a world government. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's being set up publicly, uh, authoritarian, whatever. Point is, I'm evil because a group got paid $12 million to rehash what the ADL and Southern Poverty Law Center says. I mean, it's just, uh, and, and, and the police, they sit in boardrooms because I've shown you the footage in Road to Tyranny that a firefighter sent us a police firefighters who are going, George Washington was an enemy of America and bad. The cops are like, that's right. And they're like, and the worst one was Benjamin Franklin. And they're like, that's right. And, 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 and as long as you say that's right, uh, it, it, yeah, actually, I'm doing a country boy accent. He's actually like a Yankee. Nothing wrong with that, but it's like, the Philly Fires was a terrorist. I mean, it's in Road to Tyranny. It's free online. If you want to support us, DVDs at Infowars.com. Been out for 10 years. But uh, Americans who believe their way of life is under attack. Oh, no, the way our way of life is not under attack. I mean, come on, fucks, come on. I mean, you know, they're teaching five-year-olds how to uh, engage in sexual stuff that I didn't hear about till college. I mean, the, the, our, our, our way of life's not under attack. TSA sticking their hands down our pants. I mean, that's not under attack. There's checkpoints everywhere, troops on the streets, uh, you know, uh, cancer rates, you know, up multi-thousand percentage points. No, there's no problem. Uh, Americans who are fiercely nationalistic. Oh, my God. For, uh, um, what an oxymoron. Americans who are fiercely nationalistic. I thought we were Americans. I thought that was, we were known as the best because we had more freedoms than other countries. We were the mark of freedom. Now we're the mark of tyranny to export slavery and garbage and the founding fathers are terrorists. Americans are fiercely nationalistic as opposed to universal and international in orientation. Oh my, which means I'll do whatever I'm told. Universal, international. I, I want foreign banks gang raping me. Okay, it goes on. People who consider themselves anti-global. Well, yeah, you mean foreign banks ruling me? Presumably those who are wary of loss of American sovereignty. Americans who are suspicious of centralized federal authority. I mean, like, Declaration of Independence. Americans who are reverent of individual liberty. Oh, my God, the reverent of individual liberty. I mean, this is, this is truly, I, I feel like the FCC should shut me down even saying words like reverent. Of I mean, imagine the cops are being given this so they can, oh my, oh, this is very horrible. People who believe in conspiracy theories that involve grave threat to national sovereignty and or personal liberty. Yeah, they're saying we're terrorists if we want liberty, but then if we're concerned they want to get rid of our freedoms, we're crazy, though. You have to understand. I mean, this is written like Kurt Vonnegut's satire, like to write this to wake you up. I, I mean, it's so ridiculous. There you go, folks. You heard it here first from Evil Terrorist. Uh, get that article out to people. It's not satire. Uh, DNC chair, noncompliance with Obamacare will not be tolerated. They go on to say, the IRS now gets to know about small businesses' entire payroll, the level of insurance coverage, and gets to know if someone is not just a primary breadwinner in your house. Now, the, the Solicitor General, the, the court ruling, they all say it's a tax to private banks. They can lower the quality of care, charge you more. That's the New World Order model. Corporatism, fascism, packaged in so socialism. Socialism leads to fascism in the real world in every case, not the other way around. They'll either have a counter-revolution against the socialism to bring even more centralization, but point is, that's not what you're taught in the textbooks. They're written by liars and deceivers. Or uh, we, we have a clip of her saying, well, the IRS gives you a penalty and a fine, no judge, no jury, but it's not a tax, even though they say it's a tax in the bill, which we told you two years ago, which was a conspiracy theory, which they now admit, but it isn't true.
and the tanks weren't attacking Waco. They said, come out with your hands up. They came out on the flare footage and shot them. Don't run. We are your friends. So you know, lay down GI. You've already lost. I mean, government does not lie, ladies and gentlemen. I want to admit now I've been a criminal. I've been a thought criminal, and I have actually said on air that you shouldn't trust government. My God, I'm terrorist. Ooh. Let's go ahead and go to our new leaders saying we need to pay our fair share and be responsible when they say so and go to these death mills that kill hundreds of thousands a year. Most dangerous place to be is not even a highway, it's a hospital, but you're going to pay them money. Here it is. It'll be administered by the IRS. It'll be collected on April 15th. Why can't you acknowledge that, it's, it, it, that it is, in fact, a tax? Because it's a penalty. It's not a tax. It's a penalty that if you decide to be irresponsible and continue to refuse to carry health insurance and make us all pay for your being irresponsible, then you can do that. You know, we're not going to re actually require that you have health insurance. What we're saying is if you choose not to carry health insurance, then you will be assessed a penalty that will be assessed on your tax return. And that affects about one... Well, she's in charge. You heard her. They collectivize things. Now they can control what you eat, what you do, and track it because we're all paying for it. See, that's the collectivist nightmare. Hey, you're in a socialist system now, but it's fascist profits. It's socialists down here, but combined up to them that are exempt. See, it's the two that work together. And by the way, top political scientist Georgetown said that, Carol Quigley, as well, for all the mental midgets that believe what they were taught at college. You didn't get the above PhD level, okay? You live down here in the false matrix of communism, socialism, fascism being different. And I guess Jim Jones served up cherry, pina colada, and grape Kool-Aid, but it all had cyanide. So I guess there is kind of a difference. One's red, one's clear, one's uh, purple. But it'll all kill you deader than a hammer. I mean, but there is a difference. I mean, there's little aesthetic differences. You know, it's like one tank is orange and runs over you. One is green, one is blue. It's like, hey, there's a difference. Different paint job. And people are like, oh, yeah, I got a choice, Republican, Democrat. Ooh, ooh. You know, I'm sorry, you know, that mama didn't raise a fool. I'm sorry I read all the you know, real documents to understand this. Uh, here she is saying it's no big deal. It's like what Romney did. I mean, it's the model. I mean, Romney, I mean, banker, but here it is. Why is the IRS administering this if it's not a tax? Isn't that their job to, to, uh, to impose taxes, to collect taxes, to punish people who don't pay taxes? Well, because administratively, that's, the, uh, that, that's really the easiest, most basic way to do it. It's the same way that they do it in Massachusetts, the Department of Revenue in Massachusetts. That's enough. Shut Revenue. her up. Shut her off. Just get it out of there. Here it is. They already hired thousands last year. Now they've hired thousands more, 16,500 new enforcers total. Representative Kevin Bundy, a Texas Republican, warns the IRS will hire them. And, and, and they've announced it, and you've got agent... Smith there, I mean, come on. They set it up in 1913. They collect for the private federal reserve. That's who you buy your, you know, predominantly your, your health care through. That's who owns most of the big insurance companies. What's wrong with this? Oh, let's, let's shift gears into who runs the whole new world order, though. RBS and Lloyds draw into rate rigging scandal, and they've got all these big bankers having to resign for rate rigging all over the Western world, including the United States, uh, but the, the Prime Minister is saying they shouldn't get in trouble. You know, just, just, just rig the rates so they get government bailouts at zero percent and loan it to you at 10, 20, 30, 40 percent or more. So uh, that's it. They're nice people, though. I mean, you know, Bloomberg, wash trading by high frequency firms said to face U.S. scrutiny. Oh, oh it's like, oh, oh, you made trillions, we'll slap you. And they trade with each other driving it up and then selling it off, knowing, and it's computers that they own on both sides, manipulating the entire thing. I mean, it's all a giant con game. And you go to work somewhere and they make you invest part of it in the 401k and then steal it and steal it by inflation. You're never getting Social Security, you're getting nothing. They're going to gut everything they've said it. But doesn't matter. You're not going to believe it. People will like, as it gets smaller and smaller, stay in the Ponzi scheme just because, well, there's something. I don't want to lose it all. You ever heard of, like, cut and bait, ladies and gentlemen? And it goes over all of that. Banks, inflated value of CDOs by selling to themselves. There's another uh, a report on that. I mean, that's just how they do it, because the sucker's born every millisecond. Continuing, Merck vaccine fraud exposed by two Merck virologists. Company faked mumps vaccine efficacy uh, uh, results for over a decade, lawsuit says. Well, of course, I mean...
they don't even really fake a lot of it. The actual inserts say, doesn't protect you from MMR, kills you, but so what? Or gives you narcolepsy or gives you other brain disorders. Uh, hey, what's wrong with that? Merck knowingly falsified its mumps vaccine test results to fabricate a 95% efficacy rate. Well, yeah, it's like California with whooping cough. Turned out most of the cases, they admit this, what's back of the paper, were from the vaccines. They're like, we're having hundreds of cases. Yeah, because you're, you're, it's like the, the polio shot giving the kids polio in India. It's like, yeah, 46,000 got it, a bunch of them died. We need to have, that's why we need to have more shots because it's killing people. But the vaccine did it, so we get more. You know, the GMO kills the bees, so we got to plant crops that are for the refuges so they don't eat it and the other bugs are dying because we have to feed the corn that kills bugs to you and the bugs aren't supposed to eat it but but there's nothing going on there's no world government even though we're announcing it uh everything's fine okay let's continue here uh, we have a video here of the crackhead olympics ladies and gentlemen we're seeing more and more of this people hopped up on designer drugs who who, who knows what mixed in uh, and don't worry though the police are ready to deal with it and you got a naked guy, you know, don't call an ambulance, be nice to him. You want to tackle him, you want to taser him. After all, it's been a boring day. You signed up to be able to do that, you know. Andy Griffith wouldn't do that, but hey, he's dead. It's like they say God's dead, you know, Nietzsche. Well, Andy Griffith's dead. It's like a symbolic thing. He's given up the ghost. And now Barney Fife on steroids is in control. Lock up your women, lock up your children. Here comes Andy Griffin. And here he is, the crackhead Olympics. Oh, yeah. Jeez, man. Everybody just sits back. Jeez, man. And it's a longer video. The guy's, you know, just obviously has a chemical imbalance or Lord knows what. It doesn't matter, though. At the end, they get him. That's all that matters. <laughs> they have another victory against Al Qaeda. Okay, uh, Andy Griffith dies at 86. Happy trails, buddy. Really enjoyed all your work and the fact that you were wholesome and good. Something that's known as Al Qaeda today. So with him uh, dies more of America. Doesn't matter. We've got uh, squid billies who are evil people that don't want to drink fluoride because they're conspiracy theories. <laughs> I saw some idiot commenter going, you need to stop bashing the squid billies. They had one video years ago. It's whole episodes how gun owners are scum with buck teeth rotting out. And now if you don't want to drink fluoride, you're a toothless idiot. Now, I'll assure you, the people living in the Appalachians, they're drinking their fluoride, pal, and getting their kids sterilized, too. So are the poor folks on the east side of Austin where we live. Uh, here is CBS uh, News, former president Richard Salant, or Salant, our job is to give people not what they want, but what we decide they ought to have. Absolutely, squid billies. Drink some more fluoride. We'll be back with Ask Alex. I guess that's me. And then we've got Wayne Madsen coming up. It's a big run-up to Terrorist Day, July 4th. Stay with us, because, well, you saw the federal reports. People that don't trust governments that want to take their liberties are bad. So we're bad. We'll be right back. Hi and welcome. Uh, I'm Christy Hightower from Planet Infowars. I'm here with Alex Jones to answer your questions from the Ask Alex group on Planet Infowars. So uh, let's get started, Alex. The first question is, uh, hi, Alex. I have just listened to your interview uh, with David Rothschild, which apparently was a long time ago, but uh, it was an excellent interview and it makes me think, are you going to grill any other elites like Rockefeller or uh, Romney or Al Gore? Any plans for that? That is a fantastic mm -hmm. question. Um, we were able to get the heir to the Rothschild fortune, one of the top heirs, David to Rothschild on, because he had a book coming out that showed polar bears that couldn't swim dying and, you know, give Al Gore all your money. Right. Give, the Rock, give the Rothschild carbon exchange that they own money. That's who runs it. Like Australians, it's the only country to fully implement it. Pay money to them to even live. So, oh, you're Rothschilds, I, you know, we pay you money. How about we pay the banks money now through health care? It's a tax directly to them. I mean, just incredible, 35 million Americans being forced on. And people ask, how did you get Rothschild? Well, I'm telling all the radio producers out there, people who 
well, I mean, radio producers know, but people who don't understand the internet, how to, some said, you, you must be working with him, you got him on. No, he was doing a book tour, and that's how you can get famous people on, is when they've got a book out, you can call their publicist or send it, and they just put you in the queue. So it was supposed to be a 10-minute interview. But once I baited him and said, oh, you're going to hang up, oh, you're scared, he stayed like 35, 40 minutes. And he said insane things like, oh, my gosh, uh, you know, uh, the reason that the ice caps of Mars are melting is because it's closer to the sun than Earth. Because I said, hey, if we pay Al Gore carbon taxes, uh, will, uh, you know, he stop the ice caps of Mars from melting. And he said, no, that's preposterous. It's closer to the sun. That's why its ice caps are melting. And, of course, everybody knows it's... Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. <laughs> exactly. Not, not, not Mercury, Venus, uh, Mars, Earth. Right. Uh, so it just shows the incredible hubris of these people. And here we are five years after I interviewed him. And, of course, that's famously also a clip of that semi-film Endgame. It's been totally exposed and blown away. By the way, this is totally unscripted. Usually she comes in and I kind of have 10 seconds to look at the list. I didn't even look at it, didn't even know about that first question. No. So I can't wait to hear what the next one is. Whacking them out here. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. These are almost good brainstorming sessions. Uh, that is a major thing I want all the producers to go after. And that's why when we hire all these new reporters... And the great work you're doing is you guys can just go after whoever you want. And we're going to, you've seen them setting up all these mini studios with lights and cameras oh, and yeah. Skype. You're okay. going to be able to just get somebody on, interview them. Awesome. And people are going to get bonuses. We're free market when they get big people on. <laughs> so you're welcome uh, to, we're going to set up subsidiary names. We're, we're, we're not lying, but it's a subsidiary of InfoWars that isn't as known so that you can call the publicists up. The problem is we're now known. So if they're not a fan, they're not coming on. It's like today, uh, Chris thought to call William Shatner, never even tried to get him on. He calls, gets gets his you know, head guy on. Oh, yeah, we know who you are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, when he gets back, uh, he'll probably come on. So that may happen. So it's almost, I mean, it's random. You can call interesting scientists, who knows? A lot of them are already listeners, whether they're artists, poets, uh, journalists, uh, you know, the, the famous uh, journalist Pulitzer Prize winner, Chris Hedges, uh, who is suing over NDAA and actually got it partially overturned. Awesome. We called him, turned out he knew who we were, liked the work we're doing. He's like a liberal, but he's a real liberal. You know, he's against tyranny, okay. not, oh, well, I like Obama's tyranny uh, because I'm a Democrat. Right. But I don't like Bush's tyranny because he's a Republican. Segment. So, so for our producers, because all we've got right now is Chris, who's great, but he's overworked. He's even running the board some, dealing with my media things, and he's doing a great job on the radio. We're gonna get, we've got John Bowne getting into producing. You can start getting into producing. And basically, whoever wants to can. And it, it isn't just going to be Alex Jones who interviews the cool person. It can be Christy. Awesome. Uh, it can be it can be Aaron Dykes. I mean, that's what Infowars is about. It's not Get just empowering our reporters and people, but you by our example and others' examples leading. Look at Luke Radowski from my example. Speaking of confronting people, that was the last part of the question. So they had a whole brainstorm when you asked that. That's why it's so <laughs> good, good for me to get. Awesome. That's why I love getting questions originally. When I've never seen them because then it's that original, excited, neuron-firing thought. I've noticed when I've seen a story two or three times before I get on air, by the time I get on air, it's old and I don't want to read it. Right. It's it's very strange phenomenon. So that's what I love this. In fact, I'm thinking about having them come in every day, like Chris or somebody else, and sit there while I'm on the radio and say, all right, here's the questions from Twitter. That'd be awesome. Or here's the question from planetinfowars.com. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that it makes me get out of my pattern of just ranting, mad at news. I mean, I read almost all these articles the day before I even got here. Mm -hmm. Then I, I am the guys, they printed them off. I got here, never even opened most of these files. Economy, world news, stuff I was all angry about and ready to talk about with understanding of, and I got here and never covered it. So I've got to figure out some way where maybe I should start doing my radio show at 9 a.m., just and, keep going. And it, it, <laughs> instead of getting up at 6 a.m. and reading it all and then getting mad and coming up here, I can get here and actually maybe have a show where it's up on a big screen and I'm just analyzing it fresh right there. There you go. I'm having an epiphany here right now. Yeah. What was the other one. point? One-on-one. On one. All of you can get out with a camera and confront globalists. We live in Austin, Texas. A lot of globalist bigwigs, but also good people. A lot of famous people, interesting people come through Austin. We've just got to check the newspapers about when they're at book people, when they're at Barnes & Nobles, when they're at... 
even at a you know theater or something because we can get in because we're press. We should be sending our reporters out to that. Absolutely. Austin's now a world class city, but it's nothing like D.C., L.A., New York, Chicago, where activists that are there. And we probably want to get some reporters and all those. I mean, we already have them, but reporters that actually work for us can go out and do that as well and really just give us unlimited coverage. Yeah. So big things are coming to the info war. You've only got about 20 questions. That's one of them. <laughs> Let's go to the next one right, right now. Moving right along. Um, Alex, have you ever looked into the KGB files that were released in regards to the infiltration of the Vatican? It seems funny that the three of the last of the four popes um, have had to ride behind bulletproof, bulletproof glass and yet the present pope does not. Any ideas? I know there's a lot of Yes, KGB. I actually did. Uh, I even read a book on that years ago. I even had a guest on and I did look into it. Uh, regardless of whether the Vatican was good or bad in the past, it is infiltrated with all sorts of globalists. And you can really see the power of what was the Vatican being deconstructed right now. Uh, and you can see the globalist media demonizing and attacking it. And I'm not Catholic. I come from famous family of Protestants back on both sides of the Mayflower. But regardless of that, so I'm not defending, you know, Catholicism or whatever, but I'm not bashing Catholics. I know a lot of Catholics that are good people that really stand up against tyranny. There, If you look at the media and how they operate, there's no doubt worldwide there is an attempt uh, to bring down Catholicism because it's got a, all these religious systems and Christian systems, but others have to be brought down for this, the state is God model. And, and, and the new sacrament isn't, you know, go to the church and take communion. It's have the TSA abuse you, stick their hands down your pants. And instead of offering your children to Moloch, you offer them to the TSA pervert. Uh, you offer your grandmother up to them. Uh, and so that's the new God with the drones and the big government buildings and, you know, all the announcements and government run health care. It's all about the state is God. And that means the special corporate interest, the bankers, would have captured our country through fraud and bragged that they've done it. Like on that CNBC clip, did you see that? Yeah. Where they said, that, you know, the bankers now rule you, world government's good. But I thought that didn't exist. But then you also have the Vatican involved in 57 setting up the original Euro, the Treaty of Rome. So it, it's, it's all of these powerful institutions behave the same. It's just that they're sometimes at odds with each other, but they're not at odds with each other when it comes to feeding off the public. Yeah, they give us issues to just keep us busy, I feel like. I think in the final equation, all big institutions become corrupted, and, and most historians will tell you that. It's individual mavericks that are... I had Serpico on the radio today, you know, famous cop that mm -hmm. exposed drug dealing, and they shot him in the face and all the rest of it. Yeah. And it turns out he's a listener of the show. We called him up a year ago. He goes, oh, I listen to the show sometimes. Yeah, I want to come on. Came on again. Uh, you know, And he's like, I visit InfoWars every day. I, I you know, love your site. But, but he made a point about how... He's run into police all over the country, police chiefs, but also in Europe, who have routed out corruption. And it was because they were in college and read his book about what happened or saw the Al Pacino movie and, and, and realized it's not about shaking people down and making money off drug dealers who live in a bigger house. It's about really helping people. Right. And, and so he was saying today, be an example, inspire people. And so whether you're in the Catholic church or whether you're in the Baptist church or whether you're in the military or whether you're in corporate America, whether you're a bureaucrat or a school teacher, don't make excuses about the corrupt system you're in or you know who's up on top of it. What you do that's right changes that. I mean, it's a real battle between good and evil and it's what we all do individually. So when we say, oh, it's corrupt, I'm gonna leave it alone, you're giving power to the evil. Yeah, a lot of people have been asking, uh, there's a general question actually, like what do we do? And and the great response that you seem to have is the little things. It's the little things like making copies of your DVDs, sending out like flyers, just talking to people. Well, um, take planetinfowars.com. It's success, and, and, and now we've gone through beta, and it had a few glitches like we knew, but now the guys have really got it working great. Uh, incredible job. And so it's there for you, and people are meeting, they're dating, they're camping, they're shooting, they're getting together as activists, they're starting their own journalist groups. I have get calls on the radio all the time we should start a segment once a week on the radio about Planet InfoWars. That'd be awesome. It's all part of this brainstorming. Yeah. And so, so just remind me to do that, please. <laughs> and nudge me into doing it because there's so much <laughs> going on, you know, how we'll it is. Formulate it and come to you. I mean, you see what's going on around here. We're not sitting around. No, absolutely Because not. we know the time is short. The enemy knows the time is short. And, it's, and, and, and we've got to wake up as many people as we can before things go to the next level. Or we could reverse that takeover. But what was the point I was making about... Um, 
The little things. Oh, the little things. Listen, we're taking articles that you, that uh, men and women are writing on that website from all over the world, of every race, color, you know, creed, and promoting them to Infowars and Prison Planet. And we're working on a system where what you vote up shows up on Infowars and Prison Planet. Right. And that's the key, not just what we're doing at planetinfowars.com, but setting up a system where whatever's top voted shows up on Infowars and Prison Planet. So, so, again, we're in beta right now, folks. That's why it's so important to spread the word about planetinfowars.com and everything we're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, well, the next question actually has to do with Mitt Romney is a likely Republican nominee. So is Mormonism going to be related to the global elite? Is that going to come into play in any, any facet? Well, I think Mitt Romney is first and foremost a vulture capitalist, uh, which is in the same family as a crony capitalist. He's a monopoly guy. Uh, his fruits are open borders, abortion, restrictions on the Second Amendment, carbon taxes. That, that's what he does when he's in power. His rhetoric, a lot of it's really good, but that's not what Mitt Romney's gonna do. Kind of like Justice Roberts voted for the plan. And it's like, well, he's a Republican. Well, because well, because the, 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 the insurance companies wrote this, their stocks are up, they want this. They get to cut the kind of care you get, charge you more for less, make you buy the product. Tell you when to die. Tell you when to die, the death panels. Exactly. Well, yeah. Christy, uh, it's not just me ranting. Give us your take on all this. You've been here about a month. You're doing a really great job. Got a lot of energy. We've kind of just thrown you in the deep end. Uh, what are you- Tread and water. Uh, what, I, I, I mean, politically, because I never, when I interviewed you, you know, you seemed interesting, but they'd already interviewed you. I think we did like a 10 minute interview. I never even found out your political views. I'm just kind of, hey, here's the stuff, social network, moderated, you know, no uh, hacking, no, no porn. And, you know, we're not going to call for, you know, killing races of people. Right. Uh, but it's pretty much wide open. Now that you've been, well, A, A, what were your views before and now a month here? What are your views now? It's a really fascinating question, actually. Uh, you know, I, you take the the political talking points that you hear on on all news sites and you you utilize those and so you realize that that that's all they are just talking points that you're really not delving into the reason that they're there or um even paying attention to the fact that you're getting kicked in the butt no matter who you vote for for president republican or democrat um it seems to just keep going in that one direction no matter what's going on so Politically, um, I would have to say that I was uh, very close-minded in terms of understanding how the world worked. I'm still not there, but um, but yeah, it's it's eye-opening, especially moderating comments. You see what people are saying, and you see what they're. But you're totally already there. I learned so much from the comments, how trolls operate, Absolutely. but also nuances, how smart folks are, the points they make. Serpico said that today. He said, "I love going to websites and reading the thought-provoking ideas." Because people, well, there are a lot of smart folks out there, and there's the system and the trolls like, don't, 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 don't do that. But you have, I mean, you do have deep understanding. I mean, the things you, everything you always say really has piercing clarity and boiling it down. I mean, I could spend an hour trying to describe something, but you just did it. The mainstream <laughs> media wants something to be one dimensional instead of, you know, two dimensional. They don't want you to look layers within or even ask, where does something come from? Well, what's fascinating is actually my fascination with the healthcare industry. I actually was pursuing to go to med school before I got this job. That was one of my, my aspirations. And I've decided I don't want anything to do with the allopathic system. I think it's all about pharmaceuticals and pushing this, this uh, Agenda 21, essentially, which at the time I had no idea about. But the idea being that people just want a pill they want everything to be fixed but they don't want to figure out what the source of it is they don't want to figure out like it's their food it's their water and the idea I, I honestly never knew about fluoride before i worked here i never really crossed my mind you know i heard about it being good for your teeth and that was as far as it went but in my own health like reading health medical journals and things like that i've come to the conclusion that essentially nobody cares like nobody cares enough to ask those questions and then coming here and, and it's so stupid do, because these people that don't care it's affecting their family absolutely and it's it's mind-boggling to think that nobody would even ask that question and then when they do they're discouraged see how smart she is <laughs> do go on alex oh uh, do go on <laughs> no you're doing a good job no i'm serious everybody's got it and and, and i'm the same way i'm self-deprecating but we look we all recognize inherent truth. 
and we recognize we're not getting it from the mainstream media. I mean, they'll be accurate about a plane crashed here or there was a fire there, but they'll take some issue about, well, Assad's mean and uh, we're going to get rid of him. And it's like, but you admit you're using Al Qaeda on him. I mean, I'm no rocket scientist. You're telling me give up my way of life and be a slave because of Al Qaeda, but you work with them? Right. I mean, I just keep, that's all I can talk about. I, it's just 9-11 it's just being an inside job, all of it. I mean, there it is, just proof. Well, I hate that terrorists has become one of those, um, like, gourmet as to food. I mean, it's just, it's overused and it's it's a fear monger. Yeah, like Chef Boyardee, dog food crud. <laughs> and they says gourmet, oh, and it's yeah. got a guy with a white hat on it. All so it sudden. must be really good. Absolutely. And that's what they've done with terrorism. In, in the name of fear, you're willing to give up all your rights, like the TS, starting with the TSA. Like, those kind of ideas, those kind of issues. Exactly. All we're doing is unplugging from this BS system. It doesn't even mean we have all the answers. Okay. How many questions are we? <laughs> I've got to leave in. I think we're at question three right now. I've got to leave in 20, uh, 20 minutes to go see my grandmother. Okay. That's right. I'm a good person on Friday night. I'm going to see my grandmother. Filet mignon and everything. That's uh, right. I, well, she. Did, I only see her about once a month. She likes steaks, and I'm going to bring her a steak. That's yeah. awesome. You, you actually heard me. I ordered. The, you were coming in there, and I'm like, and uh, so my wife said, "Honey, will you get her a steak? Because she likes a steak." So <laughs> we're all going to drive over with the kids and hang out with her. That sounds fun. It's about all my grandmother will eat. She hardly eats. I tell you, how that woman. She doesn't eat anything. Like a bird. Like yeah, she is like a bird. But she. You bring her a little little fillet. She'll eat it. Oh yeah. Anyways. Uh, well, the next question actually is that. I, from Ian, he says, I recently saw a picture of a drone that was used in a news article on the, the back. It had an NSA, uh, or I'm sorry, a NASA symbol. Um, and I know that NASA has stopped sending ships to the space station. Does this mean that NASA is uh, no longer doing that and instead they're working with the national defense? Well, great question. Uh, NASA, since it was set up under the office of the president in the late 40s, has always been a military operation. And so much of the secret government is actually under NASA. The space program was only their PR campaign to sell you on budgetary funding. Uh, conservatively, it was about 80% until the last few years of NASA funding went to secret projects. Like, oh, secret launch of NASA. Now it's over 90%. And the 1930s technology of Werner von Braun was the big Nazi expert. Uh, he, he drew and designed the space shuttle in the 30s. Uh, right for Hitler to come to power. He became his head of, of, of projects. So he, and he came over to the U.S. in the 50s. He was taken actually after World War II in the 40s, 45 to be technical. And he, uh, you've got the uh, Goddard Space Center. He was also a big Nazi. So and it wasn't just Nazis in that. It was Nazis over intelligence. They said, oh, we like your model. You're the boss. So they actually took about 14,000 top Nazis over here to run everything, including nerve paper gas. Clip? Is that Project Paperclip? Proper, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, a rat line paperclip. But they also would have the Nazis run the programs to bring our, they'd bring some young troops in and nerve gas them in a chamber just to have the Nazis see if they could get U.S. US doctors to go along with it. Well, we've got to kill these troops because if we get hit with nerve gas, millions will die. And, you know, it's, it's, it's for the greater good. Mm. So they killed foster kids, everything. But, but the Nazis knew it was like how to get somebody into evil in the name of good, you know, the greater good. Like that film on uh, vaccines that we carry at Infowars.com, it's, it's, it's called the greater good because that's the big, the big sick joke. But it's a whole other area of discussion. People are like, oh, we don't hear about the Nazis or the ultimate evil all day. No, there's lots of evil governments, but the Nazis, the system they developed came out of eugenics in England, and, and the government here was a big fan of that predominantly. So, the, like, the, the Nazis were like rock stars, and they took them over here and put them in everywhere. But, but, but to answer the space program question, NASA's involved with Google. NASA's involved with the NSA. NASA is just kind of a PR name. Because uh, everyone thinks it's cool to go to space. I mean, it's kind of like a NASCAR guy has got all these patches on him, and the big patch on the shadow government's NASA. Gotcha. But it's a bunch of patches that make up the shadow government. You should draw something like and, that. And, and, uh, I wish, yeah. But, I like all your doodlings. I, I, I mean, it's more like Space Command. Space Command's actually over the whole military, Colorado Springs, NORAD. All of that is, NASA's just one, one logo of the secret government. Gotcha. So, so it's always been secret. And, and now, since you're not into space travel, it's not cool anymore, they'll show you simulated space travel. It's all drone. Hundreds of drone, black mana spacecraft, DU Sabo rounds, meteor guns, 
decapitation networks to be able to knock out every world leader in one hour. They had that in 1979. I've interviewed the former head of Star Wars, Dr. Bob Bowman. People don't think Star Wars started until the early 80s. I mean, it's just a huge secret government program, pretty much an off-world technology, technological breakaway civilization. Wow. We don't even know how thousands of astronauts have died in, in secret missions. That's a conservative number. I've talked to former top NASA people who I've been friends with for decades, well, 15 years, who you can watch in the Apollo program or on the front line, like up there running things. One guy lives outside Austin. Cool, let's his name, him on. His name's Raymond Teague. Well, he's, he's hard to get on air. I imagine. Plus, he's got heart trouble and stuff. And mm -hmm. thing is, he'll tell you stuff in private. Once he gets on air, it's almost like conditioning. You can't even talk about it. It's unnerving. But, 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 unnerving. but they went to the moon and beyond. The point is, is that what we were shown with the moon technology, a lot of that was fake because they don't want to show you what they've really got. Man, these are good questions. What's coming up next? <laughs> Ron Paul is quoted as saying, nobody has a right to someone else's wealth. You have a right to your life and you have a right to your property. But education isn't a right. Medicare isn't a right. These are things that you earn. Um, but isn't it hypocritical to say that when we support a right to fair trial or a civil trial by jury, that I'm not hypocritical? Now, now maybe I'm dense, but, but, but read me that question one more time. Essentially, Ron Paul states nobody has a right to anyone else's wealth, including education is a right, uh, Medicare is a right, uh, you know. But isn't it hypocritical to say that when we support a right to a fair trial and, and a civil trial by jury? I included this question because I honestly wanted your opinion as well. I, I read it and I thought, I don't know. I don't know what he's going to answer. Well, that's a good philosophical question. There are all these anarchist capitalists that just say no state, no nothing. Well, I mean, humans organize themselves. Absolutely. The question is, how do you organize yourself? And so on one extreme, there's the argument that all good comes from collectivization, which we know is a nightmare. You have no privacy, no nothing. A bunch of people sit around or get in a gang with clubs and make you work for them. That's, yeah. that, that's what it turns into. Someone essentially takes over at some point. There's always, exactly, that creates a power vacuum. It always reverts back to the law of the jungle. So it's better to have... <laughs> good people organize themselves into an agreed upon super limited government to protect themselves from the next country that's a big centralized government that wants to come and make them slaves. Gotcha. And that's the 1776 model. And so if you're gonna have a limited government, the individual better be involved and better show up as the final checkmate in the grand jury and the jury, which you're supposed to be able to vote, but also grand jury, uh, 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 the uh, regular jury, and also the cartridge box. So there's a lot of ways to vote, and we're supposed to be the judge of the law, you know, as well as do we think this was right morally. It's called jury nullification. So people that look at Ron Paul and say, that's not libertarian enough. I shouldn't have to go to jury duty. Well, no, what you should look at is how they've turned the juries into puppets being instructed by the judge instead of the other way around. And if you study our system, that's what we're at. I mean, I'd rather beat the government health care first and beat the gun control and beat the, you know, the globalization and all of this and the corporate welfare before I sit around and say, well, let's just get rid of juries. Because the globalists actually are funding one arm of the libertarian movement to do just that, an absolutely extreme mode that they only implement in certain areas where they want to be able to get away with what they've done. So it's a, it's a balancing act. Uh, but obviously, more liberty, more what you want is to make people be more self-sufficient so, because history shows that develops greater individuals, okay? The systems that seek to destroy individualism are nightmarish and, and colorless and dull. But, but now they've already put people in a zombie state, dumbed them down, made them so unhealthy that you have to, you, as Ron Paul says, you're not going to get rid of it overnight. Yeah. You're not going to just, so, so we're just trying to pull out of the gravitational pull of giant, like the sun, of giant government, total state control. And we're just trying to get the rocket ship out of there. <laughs> and then we can debate after we survive what we're going to do. But sitting back and going, oh, I, you know, I go to an anarchist meeting and I, I, oh, I wouldn't be for any government. Really, you drove here on a government road. So you better discuss how we're going to, uh, the system's already built. Right. It is predatory. It's going into retrograde. It, it's, it's plummeting to earth. So we have to go with something that by increments, we got here by increments. Rome wasn't built in a day. We're going to get out of this by increments. To, yeah, you can apply that to your life even. Just like losing weight, 
Hey, Aaron Dykes, you know all about that, right? 92 pounds. Tangy Tangerine. InfoWarsTeam.com. I mean, you know, that's not the only thing. You had to consciously make an effort about what you did. It's little things. Absolutely. It goes back to the little things. <laughs> that's the theme. Um, Aaron right. behind the camera. <laughs> uh, hi, Alex. The The U.S. has a lot of debt, and so does the Euro, uh, So does Europe. Um, so the question is, debt to whom? Uh, the big private banks seem to have financial problems, so they can hardly own all of that debt. Um, is there a global financial black hole somewhere? Maybe you can just elaborate. You talk These about questions are just incredible. Where is the debt? It, it, it's an incredibly complex question. It gets into monetary theory, how the whole system was set up. But basically, because our monetary system is not in a tangible, measurable seashells or gold or silver or whatever it is, it's fiat. Whoever controls the fiat issuance is king. But the Rothschild say, I care not who is. There was actually an article on Planet InfoWars wrote, like I think today or yesterday, just about that. Basically, whoever prints the money. Is exactly. The I mean, Lord Rothschild said, I don't care who the politicians are. I don't care who the king is. As long as I control the money, that's right. all that matters. So basically, you end up having two systems. You've got the real economy and you've got the, quote, government. But above it, you have the central bankers or the money changers who want to attack the real economy because they're monopolist and want to move it into the government system so it can be moved up to them. But they want to create an illusion to just have the people fighting with the government all day, not looking at that, not looking at that next, that next rail. And I'm oversimplifying this, um, but continuing just writing on the back of articles here. <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, I can do better graphics than this. I mean, this is all. That's in the okay. We we could. No, no. I'm, I'm sure we can leave all this in too. I mean, let's just leave it all in there unedited. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, you know, you know, you've got humanity, you've got productivity, you've got ideas, you've got blood, sweat, and tears, you've got economy, and then you've got government that's telling us that well, it's there to organize things, but it inherently is unaccountable, destructive, and lazy. That's just what happens. Right. But you've got the banksters that understand this, the technocrats. And they're always trying to get this dependent, shut down, monopolistic, where only their buddies in certain sectors control it. So it goes into government, it goes back to them and you know, back to these guys at the top. But to ask the question is, what is the debt? Uh, you know, when a dollar is created, it's not really a dollar, it's a fellow reserve note now. It's not backed with anything. Right. You have to pay debt back to the Fed for allowing that to be created. Whereas previously, whether it was gold backed or not, the government just issued it and the dollar was just a symbol that you could use to exchange goods, which makes a lot of sense so you're not engaged in barter. And this empowers the individual. But instead, with this Federal Reserve System, it empowers the banksters who are all fraudsters and call themselves the Fed, they're not Fed. Oh, we can trust that, it's the Fed. Uh, but again, I'm oversimplifying this. I mean, the, I mean, the basic question is, where is the debt? On average, about 76% of all of the taxes you pay, county, city, federal, end up going into slush funds. Uh, it's not even for pensions. It's called the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. And the 24% or so goes into the budget that we hear about. And, that, and, 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 and they want the budget, the banksters, to always be in trouble so they can have all these ads and TV shows about how you're in debt and you, you didn't pay enough and things are about to collapse so that you get deeper in hock to them. It's basically loan sharks. They are fraudsters, so they want to wreck the economy so they can come in with fiat money and buy it up after they've wrecked it. it it's very, very simple. But it doesn't, it doesn't produce productive economies. Uh, and so if you look at Greece or, or, or any of these countries, they bring in a welfare system to create a dependent class who will beg for money and ride if they don't get it. But that's always blamed for the shortfall. It's almost never the shortfall. The shortfall is that the banksters will also put their people in, Goldman Sachs and others, into Ireland, Greece, the U.S., Argentina, uh, over by Australia, um, um, the Kiwi, um, it'll pop my head in the place, uh, What's the uh, place everybody's moving to? Um, I, sometimes I can't think of the name of something. New Zealand. You know, New Zealand. That's all run by Goldman Sachs people, the finance ministers, presidents. And then they come out and say, oh, my God, the public's in debt. The country's bankrupt. But you always notice, oh, it's too big to fail. It's the six big banks. It's their 1.5 quadrillion. 
That's the black hole. So people say, you know, where is it all going? Where's the black hole? Well, that's it. They create the black hole to destroy the real economy so they can stand over it as managers and saviors, making themselves the boss who will get you out of the crisis if you go into debt to them. But the debt was always created by them, and then their people engage in fraud to make you think that only they can protect you. I mean, do you, I mean, does Absolutely. that make sense? Absolutely. So, I mean, there's the black hole. There's all of it. Uh, so yeah, you make the problem and you come in as the euro. I mean, exactly. Yeah. You problem, reaction, solution. You there. You go. She just pulled it down. <laughs> you wreck society by design so that you can come in as the knight on shining armor. Wow, wow, that's that's seriously hateful, evil. Um, well, that's they want to be in control. Yeah. 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 Um, well, Alex, uh, I have been wanting to ask you, do you know um, if they are using the H-A-A-R-P on the chemtrails? Uh, I live in Washington state and it seems our weather patterns here are getting worse. They spray heavy up here and it rains about three days after they spray the chemtrails. So I now they want to bankrupt the country. They admit there's a weaponized weather program. They admit the program's real. A uh, guy got a Nobel Prize in the 90s, early 90s for it. And they are trying to bankrupt this country, like $20 billion to move General Motors to China. I mean, yes, every there is a weapons program. They do ionize it. That part it, it is in the patents. It's real. We just don't know exactly what they're doing. We just know the program's going on. Right. And, and I've been saying this 17 years. They didn't admit it till four years ago. And exactly all the researchers said, a barium salts, aluminum dioxide, uh, other, and then it's like, oh, yeah, we're doing that, but it's classified. What they do is they add it to the jet fuel where the engines, and, and it disperses nuclei, and they do it in key weather. I mean, it's it's amazing. You can even see the patterns over the ocean. They even have... When you were a child, how long did a chem how long did a condensation trail, a contrail, stay up there? I remember thinking, wow, it's so cool how they stay up here for so long. I didn't think they would, but I don't know, maybe 30 minutes, something like that, hour. How old are you? <laughs> you never ask a woman her age, Alex. Uh, let's say under 30. Let's go under 30. Okay, I, I never even asked your age. <laughs> no, the point is, I, I'm almost 40. Condensation trails dissipated in a matter of minutes, if not seconds, until the mid-90s. And now they persist, as they call them, and they stay there. Uh, it's not all planes. You'll have one plane right beside another plane coming in, and one's not leaving a trail, the other is. It depends what fuel additives they have. Ac actually have spray planes. It's incredible, but this is going on, and it just shows how you let a secret government take over of mad scientists. They just dominate society. Yeah, find out which ways they can they can do it. Um, okay, so uh, what would be one of the best things to do if they release the weaponized bird flu? Uh, is it? Oh man, these questions. I should be doing these on the radio. Yeah, these are great. Or do a panel with Aaron Dykes. What to do? Yeah, no, but I like the fact that it's like fresh, though. But then it's like, wow. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. I, I have moved to the country, outside Austin, because I'm not living in fear. I'm trying to live in control, because I love my children, and the globalists really are pushing the idea in all the movies and culture, but also in government documents that there will be mass plagues, weaponized Ebola. Weaponized bird flu, mouse pox for humans. This stuff kills like 85, 90 plus percent of people, depending on which, some of them kill like 98%, if you get it. And of course, they'll have some vaccine that cures you, but God knows what it gives you. I mean, right. it's, it's just diabolical crazies. Uh, so if all that happens, I still haven't set up the telecommuting out where I live because the internet wasn't what they claimed. It barely works. <laughs> um, but I mean, in the final equation, I'll have to take care of my children. Uh, the best thing you can do is get away from population centers if they release it. But if they do release it, they're going to be spraying it. So I, I don't know how you escape it. I mean, that's it's it's what's so horrible about these people and how they say once they get a big enough police state in place where they think they can release this stuff and control the panic and pose as saviors on the news, they're going to do it. And the very newscasters that are compartmentalized are going to lose their family. They're reporting that the government's the good guy and everything and it's all engineered and then we have all these documents where they're where the very government posing as a savior is the one developing it uh it's it's just it's just horrible what are the what do those reporters even do all day i mean like how is it that they say they have slow news days when there's all kinds of documents being well the average the average reporter like at cbs or nbc or abc 
the national, even if they're an affiliate, a lot of them are owned by those, are owned by sub-corporations. They have news packages, have already produced video. Mm. And then all they've got to do is read the teleprompter, and it looks like local news. Mm -hmm. About it's the law to take vaccines when it's not. People can look it up and find out it's a hoax. Even Dr. Oz doesn't give the H1N1 vaccine to his kids. He's on record as saying that. I think that's because morally in the final equation, he, he knew how dangerous it was. He couldn't just sit there and go along with that fraud. But the issue is I had the, 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 the former owner of local NBC station, since I've lived here, he's been on TV, the head guy at CBS the other day. And they said, oh, we want to come by. And they got here and the questions were coming out. At the end, they go, oh, by the way, this is for national CBS. I'd already figured that out, the mm -hmm. questions they were giving me. Because it was on multiple subjects. And then he goes, yeah, a big guru at, you know, CBS wanted me to come down here um, and ask you these questions. And it was basically the standard, well, you're making a lot of money. Is that what this is all about? But the point is that shows how local news literally is told, and it's not even owned by CBS. It's just the guru from there. That's his word, says, go interview Alex Jones. To give them, and, and they're like, yeah, this is going to air nationally. So it's like fund the, you know, head head reporter, right. you know, guy that manages CBS here locally. But it's a, I think it's owned by like Sinclair. And he's not even a bad guy. He's just, well, you've hit the big time. I've been sent down here by the big guru. And, 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 and you just see how you think it's local news. It's not. Because these guys know, do what the guru says. And go get the report for us. And it's going to air in different regions and nationally. And there they are all day over there at CBS Local. Like six years ago, I have the tape of that same CBS before he was there. I'm not bashing him. Saying mercury is good for your brain. So you can type in mercury good for your brain. And, Go ahead and take and, some arsenic pills while you're at it. Why not? Well, and it's weird. <laughs> A tiny bit of mercury and arsenic, you know, totally microscopic levels. I've talked to scientists, is actually needed. Isn't but not in the levels... Things? Do what? Isn't it already in, in certain foods and things like that? Well, that's it. You need just tiny trace amounts. They're putting thousands of times what you'd want in there. Right. Well, uh, next question, Alex. Uh, you say that the elite want a cashless society, but the illegal drug and weapon deals and so on would be exposed if the money could not be tracked or could be tracked then. So that logic doesn't compute to me. Can you explain it? Well, They've got old programs they're running that are merging with new programs. And that's a point that I've thought about a lot. Regardless, the big mega banks who do launder most of the drug money on record, I mean, just look it up. It's all over the news. You know, Big bank caught laundering $200 billion in drug money. No trouble at all. You know, Bloomberg, $376 billion uh, laundered by Wachovia and Wells Fargo. I mean, just, just look at these headlines. But at the same time, they want to move to a cashless society because it's even a bigger business to charge you $5 like Bank of America wanted to do every time you use your own debit card. Right. Remember that? Mm -hmm. and, and, and Backlash killed that. But once they've got you there, they can track the whole economy. They can shut down whoever they want. They can get rid of the underground economy. But, but here's what's going to happen with the cashless society. You're still going to have cash. You're just going to thumbprint or face scan when you buy and sell or your sales tax bracket they're going to have you on. It's going to be graduated. And with all the new fat taxes and unhealthy taxes, because we're in socialized health care, everybody's paying after all. We have to monitor what you're eating to make sure that once you buy too much red meat, you're charged for it. So, so this is what they want. We're not there yet, but they're phasing us in to this program and they're trying to merge their old cash society with the cashless. So they're still going to have cash. Uh, and, and, then they, and then they'll just waive all the regulations and laws for themselves. Like when you go take $1,000 out of the bank, they go, we're filing a suspicious report on this. What do you want all this cash for? But if you want to put $10 billion in there and you're a drug dealer, well, Wells Fargo will lease the planes for you and, and run the drugs. No, no, I mean, that was let on me, the news. Let me, let me open the door for you. <laughs> well, no, I mean, exactly. I mean, they'll, they'll go get the planes for you. Uh. So, so, I mean, I've talked to police. It's been in the news. Where they're not allowed to check into a bank where the drug dealers are depositing the money. They're just allowed to bust the drug dealer. That's just some low-level drug dealer. That's just for the facade of busting some, you know, low-level person. Keep the masses happy. Well, you, well, you got to do that to keep prices up. You can't have too many drug dealers, mm. too many people distributing, even if they're your distributor. They call those snacks. Hmm. Interesting term. Uh, all right, last question to you, Alex. Um, here's the biggest question that can't be answered but will be answered. Uh, what will push American citizens finally over the edge? 
given that Obamacare was put into action earlier this week, that was quite a riot. Um, what are your thoughts? This is a scientific tyranny run by psych warfare experts in their own words. So they, they know how to slowly, notice they're going to implement it over years. They're going to mm -hmm. take their time killing us. Mm -hmm. And 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 so they tell us, oh, it's going to be defeated. So we all lay down. Like, oh, NDAA, Obama's going to veto it. He he wrote the thing. His lawyers did. He signed it, but he signed it on New Year's Eve, so you wouldn't feel bad. It, you know, it, it's we were too busy doing other. It's kind of like a shot they give you that kills you, but it feels good when they do it. Mm. You know, like oh, you're going to have pleasure. You're going to be dead in 60 seconds, but doesn't that euphoria feel nice? So you don't resist them, or it, it's death by a smiley face. It's like, I'm nice. It's like Warren Buffett always poses with ice cream cones. Most photos, like, oh, ice cream, I'm non-threatening. Or Bill and Melinda Gates are always just superheroes. Oh, we're sweet. This is all part, I mean, real evil doesn't dress up like Darth Vader or Freddy Krueger. It acts all like an NPR thing. Hi. That's how you get a horse when you're taken to the glue factory. Not a 20-year-old horse. Yeah, that old nag, you know, she ain't bad, did a lot of work, but... She's old, and I'm going I'm gonna, to I'm gonna sell her off for dog food. They're going to chop her, gonna chop her uh, hooves off and turn them into Elmer's glue. And you just, come on, Betsy. Come on, got some right here in the, in, the, in, the, in the trailer for you. Yeah, there's a carrot in there, sweetheart. You go on in there, honey. They don't, they don't go, I'm going to turn you into glue. Arr! The horse would run off. It's like, <laughs> how you doing, sweet cake? Come on in. It's all right. You see, I actually only a few times delivered cows to slaughterhouses. And, and they'll open up the, as I work for a large animal vet, a few times we had to be there shooting up vaccines just to follow regulations at the slaughterhouse, mm -hmm. even though it wasn't. And, 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 you know, when they first bring them, you don't want them to get upset, you know, big trailers of cows. It's just like, all right, come on off. Cause you don't want to stampede, but if they don't do what you say, you give them a little cattle prod. But it's like, all right, everything's fine. You're going to enjoy this. And, and that's how they do it with horses. It's like, come on in here. You know, when they walk over to a horse that's broken its leg in a race, they don't come up and try to scare it. They're like, it's all right. It's all right. And they take the handgun and shoot it in the head. It's just, oh, we're NPR. We got a nice, friendly NPR voice. You see how that works? And, and so that's what it is. It's just all, ah. Uh, if we can break people out of their trance, we could collectively at the grassroots have the minions of the system realize that this is going to destroy their children and their future. That's the only hope is accessing the ancient survival mechanisms of humans. But through archetypal programming, the system is able to shut that down. They know exactly what they're doing. So we're here just cutting through the signal with a direct, hey, they live, you sleep, and they, they want you to sleep so they can kill you. Wake up, truly live. But what will probably wake us up is if the globalist they like to overdo it. They think they're gods. They understand how we work, but they're not gods. They cheat each other. They infight. That's one of the biggest threats against their program. But then from the grassroots, from the proletariat, as they call us, it's that they're going to implode things too fast and things will get out of hand. That's why they want to move gingerly. People will wake up. Because they're loading thousands of horses on to go get cut up for steaks to be sold in France. You know, they, they, they want to get all the horses on the train here. That's why they don't kill me. Because I'm kind of kicking and jumping around. Going, rrr, rrr. They're like, never mind him. You get on that train, there's a bunch of carrots at the other end. And I'm like, no, no, I saw what they do. And they're like, you know. Oh, man. Do you see the analogy? Yeah, absolutely. When you put it that way, it's really easy to, to pick No, that's why they act real. The whole act of the sandals and the hippie stuff, they have lots of minions who look like the style. They're not really hippies. They're, you know, people that are into freedom. You take folks like Bianca at the Texas Academy of Sciences. I mean, he had like a 90% standing ovation crying when he said 90% will soon die, including my family. Airborne Ebola and other scientists all around the power trip of, we're going to kill everybody. Ah! I mean, they're just like these, it's scum is who they are. Yeah. It's just the wild control of, we're going to kill everybody. Ah! It's so much fun. And, and, and like the average person is like, what? Right. But, but, but these are the scientist types selected out of all the scientists that came in who were normal because they liked injecting, you know, things into rats to see what would happen. They were the 1% of the sickos told they were the elite. Those were told, you're not getting a PhD or, okay, well, you'll just go into this division that isn't actually running things. It, it, it was like I never had that J.P. Morgan or, no, it was Goldman Sachs uh, filmmaker. I mean, I didn't even know she'd been like a, one of the highest people in the company. I looked it up. It was true. After she said it, she made this greater good I talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, and... 
and 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 I was like, you know, it's a master plan to kill everybody. She goes, it's funny. I had a Goldman Sachs, you know, meeting with the you know head guy from the big pharma, and he goes, I'm going to make seven billion this year killing people. And he was getting off on it. And I went and investigated and found out it's it's true. It's like anybody that breaks through to this level, you're not part of the club unless you like killing people. But see, she was like a high-level Goldman Sachs person making millions of dollars a year and everything, but hadn't broke through to that level. And this guy thought he was comfortable, and he just kicked back in her office. Yeah, we're going to make $7 billion this year killing these people <laughs> with these vaccines. God, I love killing them. She's like, you're joking, right? No, I'm going to come. What do you mean, joking? <laughs> you're, you're, a, you're a Goldman Sachs high-level vice president, yeah, managing director. We're going to kill some people. We're, we're, we're powerful. We kill people. I mean, that's why when Zbigniew Brzezinski, who helped Pol Pot kill 30% of his population, goes up on a, I mean, people like David Rockefeller and Herrings are like, sir, you are like the most incredible person. You're like a rock star. Henry Kissinger's a rock star because he killed a bunch of people. But he did it bureaucratically and wimpily. And they love that whole, I'm ranting here. Uh, last questions here. I mean, I, 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 I know this sounds wild, but we've broken through to the other side. We've discovered these vampires is basically what they are. They're like a cat playing with a mouse. And I sit here watching them do this to humanity. I don't want to sit here and watch them get away with it anymore. Right. Which is awesome. I want to rout these people. They, they came up with this scientific, passive, you know, I'm in a pink outfit. Uh, they're, the, the, that's a camouflage. The ultimate camouflage is they're acting non-threatening. These are ravenous, demonic, psychopathic, killing wolves. Well, to the average person, we don't comprehend that. Like, I don't want to kill anybody. I have no desire to kill anyone. So why would anybody else want to do that? You just don't realize the power of it. <laughs> I guess I'm not that high up yet. <laughs> Alex Jones, thank you so much for coming on and answering these questions. Thank you. I mean, I know that was like 40 minutes. That was wonderful. Um, again, I'm Christy Hightower with Planet InfoWars. Send all of your questions to the Ask Alex group at Planet InfoWars. And till next time. And we're going to start a lot of other stuff, too. I mean, we're trying to get the articles you write up on the main InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. Give us your ideas. Help us spread the word. Christy, it's good having you on board. Wonderful. Aaron Dykes, you've got something big coming out next week. I'm just going to leave it at that. It has to do with the skulls that were in here. It's big. It's big. Big secrets. Oh, awesome. That was one of the questions I, you know, we only have so many questions we can ask at a time. Well, it was supposed but... to come out earlier this week, but you know, it's, it's, it's an ambitious project. Okay. <laughs> They're excited. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure, but if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Hi, I'm Christy Hightower, site moderator on Planet InfoWars, here to let you know how patriots like you are talking this week. Have you ever thought about the greatest risk to civilization biologically referencing? Well, user Rosso has, and in his article, The Greatest Biological Threats to Civilization, he references something like 20 different known biological threats, anthrax, cholera, uh, Ebola, different things like that. He gives you fatality rates, symptoms, uh, how it affects, how it would affect you. Um, and these are just the ones that we know about, much less ones that might already be developing against us. Then there's an article by In Like Flint, The Universe, Ancient Astronauts in Atlantis. He starts by telling you a story from his childhood, how his, his 
is a fascination with aliens from above coming down and, and giving us technology from ancient civilizations ago and how the in the know now are holding this information, withholding it from us. So that being said, it leads me into our last article, Food Stamps, President Obama Wants You on Food Stamps. This is actually a great article um, for, for many reasons. Melissa Melton is actually one of the reporters from the Reporter Contest. And this article was featured on the InfoWars homepage, and it's still a featured article. She talks about how skyrocketing food stamp usage during Obama's presidency, something like 100%. She gives great references. She is well-spoken and had a great response to her article. So that being said, we are looking out for great articles, well-written, well-referenced. So keep up the good work, you patriots out there. And that being said, also, some other things on Planet InfoWars, you can find the deal of the day, like in the Fed t-shirt. We had that on sale for $12.95 in the sidebar, and that's only on Planet InfoWars. Other things like, like groups that you can join, get active, create missions, meet people in your, in your local area. So keep up the good work. We are paying attention. And thank you so much, patriots. Till next week. And we are back on the eve of July 4th, 1776. It is the eve of July 4th, 2012. In fact, guys, at the end of the show, after we interview Wayne Madsen, I meant to read part of the Declaration of Independence today, but they printed it in a type so small I couldn't read it, is my excuse. Will somebody print me a bold one of that? Uh, so that as we end the Wayne Madsen interview, I can engage in sacrilege that makes the globalist so incredibly angry. Uh, and I can read part of the Declaration of Independence that is like dousing gallons of holy water on Count Dracula. So we're going to be uh, going over some of that. That's why we see all these news articles demonizing the Declaration of Independence. There's a new article out at PrisonPlanet.com where the fe a new federal document like MIAC and Homeland Security says, Freedom lovers, if you just call yourself a freedom lover, really at PlanetInfoWars.com, we have a section called Freedom Lovers for dating, terrorism, uh, and, and, and by the way, uh, you know, the IRS is going to enforce the new uh, Obamacare, which isn't even really socialism. It's a, a direct tax to the insurance companies owned by the big banks. Now, Wayne Madsen joins us now, and he has written a new book that is quite a page turner. In fact, I've got a copy of it in there. Uh, the Manufacturing of a President, the CIA's Insertion of Barack H. Obama Jr. into the White House. And it's at WayneMadsonReport.com if you want to get a copy. Now, going back to uh, the uh, reason he's joining us today, we have an article out of the Daily Mail just last week. And there have been hundreds of these. It turns out dreams of his father, even Obama's spokesman had to have been a few months ago, oh, a lot of it is just composites and, uh, and, 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 and uh, well, what we'd like you to believe, basically. They came out and admitted that a lot of it is fiction. Well, the whole thing is a fiction, and somebody who's been to Indonesia, somebody who's been to Africa, somebody that's been to all these places, is Wayne Madsen quite the globetrotter, and he's been to Chicago trying to find out who he is. Is he Barry Sotero? Why are all the records secret? Why did they say for 16 and a half years in all of his publications with his publicist that he was born in Kenya? Why does his wife say twice, we went back to his homeland, Kenya? Is that all just a giant cover for who he really is? All we know is Barack Obama is not who he says he is. And granddaddy and mommy, this guy's got more CIA in his family uh, than even the Bushes. I mean, it'll make your head spin. And I'm going to get his take on dreams from my real father that I think is very compelling. Uh, that, well, the family hung out. He wrote about him a lot. The dad would come, the grandpa would come over and visit him. I, from the voice, the face, the photos, I believe this, that there's a very good chance that this is uh, accurate about who his father really is. And that's why they put out the whole thing. He was from Kenya. We're like, hey, you said you were from Kenya. And he's like, I never said that. We're like, it's you say it right here. And then it turns into, a, but that's exactly how these agencies operate. Speaking of agencies, whistleblower, Wayne Madsen's written for some of the biggest publications in the country. He also was in anti-submarine warfare for the Navy before being with the National Security Agency, NSA. And uh, he's also appeared ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, BBC, uh, Al Jazeera, you name it, he's been on it. 
And uh, you can always see him reporting on national security issues. If you're watching C-SPAN, there's a big national security hearing. You can see him back there. Uh, hangs out at the National Press Club. Gets a lot of important work done. He joins us to get into the providence of Obama and why this is important. Because we know he's not who he says he is, so they can blackmail him. That's what's important here. We, uh, I've never claimed to know exactly where he's from or what's going on. We just know his official story is a piece of fantasy that would make a... Uh, science fiction movie pale in insignificance. But enough of my ranting and perseverating. Wayne Madsen, before we get into your new book, uh, which I want to spend the lion's share of the interview with you today, I always love picking your brain, one of my favorite guests to get on. What do you make of this health care legislation? Uh, what do you make of all the draconian police state announcements that are happening uh, and the fact that Government, it seems, has gone completely insane. I mean, things are undoubtedly accelerating. Do you agree with that statement? And what do you make of what's happening right now? Well, I think it's uh, – I, I saw a poll the other day that uh, basically said that most Americans, conservative, liberal, it doesn't matter, uh, are just fed up, and there's a lot of anger. And, and we saw the anger, how it manifested itself into the Tea Party and the Occupy Wall Street movement. And um, I think and, and just the sense I get from uh, Washington is that uh, some of the politicians, some of the elected officials in Congress are picking this up now that they're going back into their districts to campaign for reelection. And, and um, of course, they, you know, they still sit here in Washington and they're still protected, but they're starting to feel that angst out there in the country. And and, uh, um, you know, the health care program, the mandated uh, payments, um, uh, again, is just another uh, effort. As you said, it's to make the insurance companies wealthy. Um, you know, uh, people are going to have to uh, buy this insurance, and they're going to uh, be buying it not from Medicare. They're going to be buying it from Aetna or Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, and uh, obviously, that's why they're stocked went up uh, on uh, the Roberts, um, basically the switch switchover vote, uh, apparently was going to vote against it and decide the last minute to vote, uh, vote along with the, the, um, the other four um, justices. Yeah, I saw reports at ABC News and CBS, what we all knew was obvious, they were going to announce it well, a week and a half ago, but postponed it a week. And now they're admitting that, oh, he, he did indeed switch. So... What type of pressure, you live there in D.C., you cover this, what type of pressure do you think they put on him? I don't think they had to put too much pressure on him because before Roberts was a judge, he was an, uh, a senior partner for Hogan and Hartson, uh, which I think has changed its name to Hogan and, and Lovell now, a big D.C. law firm, and uh, amongst their clients are the biggest insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies in the country. So his portfolio, which I assume is in blind trust, probably did quite well. So I don't think he had to have his arm twisted too much because uh, he's, a, he's a wealthier man as a his vote. Sure. And I mean, this really is just another bailout to the mega banks. And, that, and so they come to him and say, do this or it's all going to collapse, but it's guaranteed to collapse it in the final equation. I mean, I want to coin a term basically here today, and I want to get your take on this if you agree with it, but studying geopolitical systems, you know, Carol Quigley at Georgetown talked about this, that we want both parties to be there to have the illusion, but the difference to only be uh, in rhetoric in the final equation, the establishment gets what it wants, and so it's like a soccer game. I mean, it's an event, but it doesn't you know, really have any um, outcome other than just enriching the ruling class, but to coin... A, a, a quote or phrase here, in history, fascism loves to masquerade as socialism, or socialism is a cloak for fascism. And then so-called political scientists will say, oh no, the two are very different. But if you actually study history, a lot of socialisms are really just fascist systems calling themselves socialist. I mean, Hitler did that, but, but at the grassroots, it's a low-quality socialism, and then it always diverts the money to a fascist combine that writes the laws and controls the regulators and exempts itself from everything. I mean, what do you call a system like that? 
Well, I think it's uh, basically a plutocracy uh, where you've got a lot of uh, uh, wealth uh, in the hands of very few, and they make all the decisions. I, uh, you know, the, the illusion of a choice, uh, the great American philosopher George Carlin, and I, I look at him more as a philosopher than a comedian because he was right on the money on so many issues. He said these presidential elections over the last uh, couple of decades uh, have been uh, merely uh, to give the American people the illusion that they have a choice when, in fact, they don't have a choice. And here, look, this year we have another one of these, uh, Obama-Romney. Uh, I mean, uh, what's, the, what's the real difference there? They're both beholden to the power structure. They're both beholden to, um, you know, if it's Obama, it's Goldman Sachs. If it's Romney, it's his Bain Capital buddies. Um, so, again, yeah, this election is – there's an illusion that there's a there's a choice when in fact there's no choice. What do you make of Rand Paul's endorsement of Mitt Romney? Yeah, that was kind of interesting. I I think uh, he obviously he's got a political future ahead of him in the Republican Party. Uh, he is a Republican senator, um, and I think he's probably looking uh, as many. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of conventional wisdom here, even some Republicans in this town, that Romney's not going to win this election. So guess what? They're all looking at 2016. Rand Paul's looking at 2016 for a VP slot. Uh, obviously, Jeb Bush, who uh, his endorsement of Romney was really weak. And uh, I think he's obviously positioning himself for 2016. Uh, and, and others are. And uh, I really think that uh, what we're going to see uh, with this election, uh, look, uh, Romney might pick up a few states like North Carolina and Indiana that went to Obama the last time. Uh, but I think we're going to see a very low voter turnout, uh, especially amongst uh, some of the evangelicals who really, they don't like Mormons. <laughs> well, I agree with you. And I understand the political decision of Rand to do that. And, and I like Rand, he's been on the show over the years, you know, I've talked to him a lot. I don't think he's a bad person. It's just, it's so refreshing that Ron never did compromise and that 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 was the missing ingredient we need to have statesmen and not politicians. But I just see a lot of signs in Campaign for Liberty that instead of them taking over the Republican Party like they said they were gonna do, more and more they're being absorbed. And so it's more of just a thing of, okay, I still like some of what you do up against the TSA, Federal Reserve, corporate welfare, things like that. But just the general move, I'm simply voicing that I'm not in a cult. So I'm saying I don't like the direction Campaign for Liberty is starting to go in. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, what, what, there's always been a feeling that people who run, like we saw a lot of Tea Party candidates, uh, uh, they were successful running for uh, the House of Representatives, especially. And there's always the idea that uh, the, the person doesn't make the office, the office makes the person. So when they get into the system and they get all the briefings and the committee assignments are, are doled out, uh, then you start to see whatever rhetoric they use during the campaign, they become a member of the club. It happens all the time. And they want to win and they're competitive within a system. But if the system is broken and inherently a fraud, they would have more power, even if they were just opportunists, and I'm not saying they are. I believe Ron Paul is an you know, idealistic person. I think his son, to a you know, great extent, is. But in a world of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act, uh, to quote Eric Blair, a.k.a. Or George Arwell. And so I just think that going with conventional wisdom, Senator Paul, who the system tried to defeat and who we backed, First the Republicans in the primary, then the Democrats. With every dirty trick, he was loved and his star rising from the grassroots as this system is collapsing because he was seen as contrarian to the status quo fraud. So I just I just don't buy into the old line wisdom of we must join with Sauron, you know, like Sauron tells Gandalf. I just think it's I think it's madness. But but again, it comes off as all the advisors telling him, oh, you're doing the right thing, young man. You're going to go far. Go far in the Third Reich, the Fourth Reich? I mean, no, he, 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 it's a bad move. Right. And um, the, the, the Senate has always been considered one of the most exclusive clubs in the world. There's a hundred of them. 
and uh, many of them have been there for decades. And uh, it's it's it is one of the most exclusive oligarchical clubs around. What a shame! You know, they should know this. People like uh, Specter and others have been losing and getting thrown out, so they should pay attention to that. Well, they should, and uh, I, I'm I'm just uh, my, my gut feeling is that with this election, uh, because I think it's going to be very low voter turnout, uh, we're not going to see a lot of incumbents. Uh, we've had some incumbents tossed out in the primary, but I think uh, we're going to see uh, the same thing that happens every election. Uh, uh, they don't throw the bums out; they throw the bums in. I predict the GOP establishment will betray Rand Paul. What do you think? Uh, what was that? I predict the GOP establishment will betray Rand Paul. Oh, look, you know, the, the, this is a viper's den. <laughs> uh, you know, if you if you let your defense on around these people in Congress, uh, you know, they're plotting and scheming all the time, and as are their staffs. Uh, they're always trying to position themselves. Uh, for, you know, I, I, I forget who said it, but they, somebody once said that every U.S. senator, when they wake up in the morning and look in the mirror, they see the next president of the United States. And, uh, of course, they don't all believe that, but uh, uh, definitely uh, they're, they're out for themselves uh, for the most part. Now, they certainly take themselves very, very seriously. Okay, I want to get into your new book here and, and you know, chronicle the background because I know people have heard part of this, but you're really an expert on it. I want to go over the full waterfront. But then at the end of that segment, about 20 minutes or so on the book or longer if you need it, I want to just grab bag what is on your radar screen because I know you're always investigating other things and I don't know what those are yet. I want to find out at the end of the interview, but I just wanted to make sure we don't forget to do that. Wayne Madsen, tell people about the new book, The Manufacturing of a President. People can find it uh, there on your site, waynemadsenreport.com. Well, this all began when I was sitting up at the National Archives, uh, sitting there at a terminal going through reams and reams of CIA documents that have been declassified, many of which are heavily redacted. And I, uh, this was February of 09. So Obama had only been president for a couple of weeks. And I, I was very interested in this company that he worked for after he graduated from Columbia Business International Corporation. So I did a search uh, through the archives and up pops a few um, articles that uh, the CIA had in, 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 the, uh, in their files, uh, one of which was a New York Times article from 77, which stated that DIC, Business International Corporation, had been used in the past to provide non-official cover to CIA agents overseas. And uh, in this case, it was four journalists were uh, working for BIC, were actual CIA agents. And I said, well, that's very odd. What did Obama say about this in his book? And I went back and, and oh, there it is. He said after he graduated from Columbia, he went to work for a company in Manhattan. That's all he says. It wasn't, and you know, it turns out it wasn't a company, it was the company. And even the new, uh, the David Marinus book that's out on Obama, uh, he had to address that CIA connection to BIC. So he, he cites a, a conversation between Obama and some BIC, more senior guy, I guess, uh, in the hallway. And he says, oh, they got in a big argument where Obama was criticizing the CIA. And this older gentleman was basically saying, look, you know, they're not all bad there, but uh, I think this is more, and, that, and that's it, and that's it in the Marinus book, because, uh, um, you know, they're not going to go into the depth that I went into, uh, you know, BIC, who who were they, uh, who, what did they represent, what did they do for the agency, and then, you know, the whole family and their connections to a lot of other front activities from Madeline Dunham, the grandmother's connections with the Bank of Hawaii, uh, operating the escrow accounts that were used to pay slush funds, uh, money to uh, CIA slush funds to people in Indonesia, Indonesia, Philippines, South Korea, Japan, and, and other places. Um, you know, the grandfather, Stanley Armour Dunham, he, you know, they tried to say he was a furn traveling furniture salesman. You know, he could get a job, he'd go from town to town. Well, that was obviously covered. Uh, he was uh, in the OSS at the end of the war in France and then popped over to Lebanon. Uh, for a number of years, and there's photographic evidence of 
of Obama's mother as a young girl, probably about uh, 10 or 11 years old in, in Beirut. And um, so the whole history of Obama and his family has been manufactured. So hence the title of the book, The Manufacturer of President, it's really a play on the old Teddy White series, The Making of a President. He wrote those the 1960s elections. Uh, but uh, this, in, in fact, was the manufacturing of a president. And I go into the whole history of, of uh, behavioral science programs at the CIA, the fact that the university was one of five universities favored by Richard Helms, the longtime CIA director for CIA's behavioral research uh, uh, programs. And, you know, what is behavioral research? Well, it's programming individuals. I <laughs> mean, uh, so is he a man? Is Obama a Manchurian candidate from Langley? Uh, not from Manchuria, but a, a Manchurian-like uh, uh, candidate. Uh, it, it certainly appears so from all the research that I've done. This person was deep selected at a very early age, talent spotted, and uh, he had this uh, just this uh, amazing political uh, rise. Um, he had only he was a junior senator serving his first term when he was elected president. When you look at other presidents, they had served in the House, the Senate, governorships for years and years and years before they ran for the presidency, and many of them lost. All right, let's stop there for just a moment, Wayne. I want to get your take on Dreams from My Real Father. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but knowing you, you probably heard of it by Joel Gilbert. Look. I understand the perspective of him being connected to Reds, but I also understand that a lot of that was funded by the military industrial complex to create a false enemy as a pretext to set up a police state. That's been declassified, so people have trouble bringing two things together. Wait, CIA, but also connected to all these communists. And I got to tell you, I think the evidence is compelling that Frank Marshall Davis looks, acts just like his dad, that the grandpa every week when he was a little kid would bring him over there, and that there was, his book says some weird thing between them that was secretive and he didn't know what it was, hint, hint. He talks more about this guy in his book than most of his other family, his mother. It's like 2,500 words. I mean, uh, the, the, the writings of this guy are telegraphed right into Obama's speeches. The other dad looks nothing like him. The State Department threw him out of the country and said this isn't uh, Obama's dad, Barry Sotero's dad. Uh, the, the photos look real from the private collection, uh, you know, with uh, Ann Dunham bending over or whatever. He was an admitted pornographer who wrote the Black Sex Rebel book. The photos of the couch he's on, countless photos and films of him doing TV interviews on the same couch. Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on. And then you realize, wait, they said for 16 and a half years in his publications that he was from Kenya. She said it. There's all this history because that was his cover for so long. And then he had all these other identities that you and I, I mean, just remember three years ago, you'd say his name's Barry Sotero. You know, you'd been to foreign countries to prove it. They're like, that's a conspiracy theory. And then now they're like, oh, yeah, he was Barry Sotero. So, so we know there's been a cover up. We don't know who he is. But I'm telling you, I think this film, you know, your book goes over the fact that it's a you know, made up story, like the Daily Mail said, that, you know, his dad wasn't really tortured by the British. They admit it's all a fiction. Uh, you know, you're over here showing that he's not who he says he is. Comment on who you think he really is and what you think of this film, if you've heard of it or seen it. A, and then B, I want to ask the question, you know, CIA background, communist background, how those two go together? Well, I, I definitely think um, um, he is a, he was a CIA uh, groomed and deep selected and talent spotted individual from a very young age. Now, I didn't get a whole lot into the birth certificate, but I'll tell you what, what I uh, concluded is that uh, there's a lot of evidence that he was in fact born in Honolulu, but there's also a lot of evidence. And I talked to several people, including po politicians in Hawaii who were old enough to have and, and remembered the family, uh, knew the family and, and said, look, they, um, Obama was born in Honolulu, but the issue is we don't really think that Barack Sr. is his father. Now, if the birth certificate uh, shows another father as a biological father, that would necessitate, obviously, trying to um, uh, uh, change the birth certificate in some manner. Um, and I'm willing to say that that's probably the case.
Uh, well, yeah, um, they say that his dad was African American. They didn't start yeah. using that till the 70s and 80s. I mean, the term right. didn't exist in 1961. Absolutely, and and uh, whether his father was uh, Marshall Davis, it would make sense that Stanley Armour Dunham, the grandfather, who was with the CIA station in Honolulu, you know, trying to tell everybody he was working for Pratt's Furniture Store, which didn't exist. It only existed in corporate records that there was no more brick and mortar store in Honolulu called Pratt Furniture. Uh, that was an invention. Uh, but look, uh, you know, if he's if he's with the Honolulu CIA station and Frank Mar Marshall Davis is either, a uh, you know, somebody who they're using as a, uh, a, a double agent or a uh, uh, or somebody they're trying to get information or intelligence from, it would make sense. He might hang around this guy uh, because remember, in this time frame in Hawaii, Hawaii, this is the Cold War. Hawaii is basically a huge military base, especially the island of Oahu. And you've got a known communist agitator prancing around. Obviously, they're going to send FBI, CIA at him. Absolutely. And look, we also know we're told that Obama's mother and Barack Sr. for the first time in a Russian language class at the University of Hawaii. Well, it's quite clear that uh, Stanley Armour Dunham, the grandfather, was at the airport. And I've got a photo of that in 1959 when uh, Barack Sr. first arrives as part of the CIA's Airlift Africa project to get these African students uh, educated and then turn them back over to uh, their native countries so they could be put into government positions. Uh, the Russians were doing the same thing, and we were competing with them and the Chinese to a lesser extent. So, so um, now I, I was told by a very good source that in 1960, Stanley Armour Dunham got uh, a new assignment, a uh, temporary assignment. He was sent to Cuba. This is after Castro takes over, and he took uh, Ann Dunham uh, there, and uh, there apparently is some files in Cuba held by the Cuban government that Obama's father may have been an Afro-Cuban. Uh, who impregnated her in 1960. Of course, Obama's born August the 4th. Well, I was about to say, just looking at people, uh, I mean, he, he looks like, you know, folks I know that are part white, part, you know, Hispanic, part black. He looks nothing like his supposed father. And, I mean, I've always said he looks like he's not just white and black. He looks like he's Hispanic as well. Yeah, and uh, this is this uh, came to me from a very good source, uh, as I say, uh, has very good connections with the Cuban government, and that's what they have determined, that uh, there was a record of Stanley Armour taking uh, Ann Dunham, Stanley Ann Dunham, to Cuba in 1960. It would have been probably uh, towards the end of 1960. He's born August the 4th, uh, given eight to nine months pregnancy. Uh, that would make sense. But, but see, you know, I say that Marshall Davis... Uh, looks like you know he has m multiple uh, racial backgrounds, not just white and black as well. I mean, the voice, the the, the facial spots, the uh, the fact that the grandpa bring him over there every week, the the fact of the couches, uh, the black sex rebel, the porn stuff. I tell you, ha have you seen this film yet, Dreams from My Real I, Father? I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I'll tell you though that uh, Stanley Armour Dunn with the grandfather used to take young Barack to a lot of places. Uh, I have a, a, a part of the book where I describe how he takes him to Bill Letterer's bar, which is in the you know the the, the Hooker District of uh, Honolulu, Hotel Street, and uh, Bill Letterer was OSS during uh, uh, the Second World War. So course, basically, Barack was being shown how to become a CIA operative. Well, yeah, he said he used to sit at the bar and blow bubbles into his coke, and but Bill Letterer, of course, became very famous. He wrote the book called The Ugly American. And um, and during the war, he was stationed in China, and he the friend, you know, he was basically the OSS point of contact with a Mr. Nguyen, a uh, Vietnamese man. Uh, that who turns out that was Ho Chi Minh himself. Amazing. Well, uh, bottom line, I'm going to send you a copy of this. We you know we sell it at Infowarshop.com because I want to get your real honest review. I respect your view and, and, and uh, your analysis, so I want to get your perspective on this intriguing film. I'll, I'll uh, mail you a copy tomorrow, all right? Okay, great. Fantastic. Now, let's get into m more of your book. I mean, I mean, it, it, it covers a lot, and it really proves what is now getting more and more mainstream traction, that we don't know who Obama is, and so that tells us a lot about him, though. 
It, it does. And as I pointed out, look at past presidents, recent past presidents. We know, actually, ever, <laughs> we knew too much in the case of Bill Clinton, didn't we? Uh, we know but, about Mitt Romney's dog with diarrhea. I mean, we know, you know. Yeah, right. And we, we knew their hometowns. We knew all about Plains, Georgia, Hope, Arkansas, uh, Ike, uh, you know, Abilene, Kansas, and the latest. High Gettysburg. school sweethearts, what? Everything. Yeah. Absolutely. And we know so little about Obama. And from a historian's uh, standpoint, you know, it's very tough to do a book on this guy and because there's just so little available and the record has been altered. What about his uh, academic uh, uh, records from uh, Occidental and Columbia? They said they would release them, but under the Federal uh, Education Privacy Act of 1974, uh, called Buckley Act, that was Bill Buckley's brother Jim Buckley put that through, the Senate, then Senator from New York, they can't release those records unless the student uh, them, uh, himself or herself authorize it, and Obama has not authorized. It. So what's he hiding? Well, wait a minute. The first Obama? executive order, or, or one of the first, day one, he signed an order making a bunch of his stuff secret. I mean, wow, he's really wanting to keep that secret. Absolutely, and not only that, he's also that also applies. He has veto authority on releasing records from past presidents. Uh, even if their families, like Reagan's family, it says release it. Well. Doug, uh, George W. Bush was the first to say, uh, no, we're not going to release certain things. And, and Obama's followed right along. As a matter of fact, you know, there were the two meetings between old man Bush and Jeb Bush where they went to the White House kind of on a, at a moment's notice. And Obama dropped his schedule. The last time they did it, Obama was at a big fundraiser at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel here in Washington. And he, he leaves, you know, where he has all these campaign bundlers giving him loads of dough. He leaves to go meet with, with old man Bush and Jeb at the White House. It's the second time there was one of these impromptu meetings. And it, it wasn't like the last meeting. It wasn't like Obama wasn't going to see them again because he saw them the very next night, Saturday night, at the Alfalfa Club dinner here in Washington. Another one of these oligarch elite type uh, dinners uh, we have here. So what's uh, really going on? Are they saying, do you do what you're told? I mean... It certainly looks that way. You know, ex-presidents come into town all the time. Jimmy Carter's been in town, but, you know, the, the current occupant of the White House doesn't drop everything to meet the uh, ex-presidents just because they're ex-presidents. Uh, uh, I mean, it's uh, maybe for state funerals and things like that. They, you know, they, they see them. But, uh, you know, this is kind of bizarre where the Bushes can come into town. And the old man is pretty bad off. You know, he's in a wheel the last meeting, a wheelchair. But here's Obama drops everything. Uh, leaves early from the Mandarin Oriental, rushes over to the White House to meet the, uh, you know, one-time director of the CIA. And remember, when Obama was associated with the CIA Business International Corporation, George H.W. Bush was vice president. He was running the Iran-Contra thing. He was running the aid to the Afghan Mujahideen. So, uh, you know, he was basically... Uh, Is Obama's it that bad that the, the highest levels, the Republicans and Democrats from a lot of evidence I've seen, just agree on who they're going to let in, and that it's, it, I mean, at the top of the apex, it is absolutely a club. They might fight over who gets the levers of power, but they are totally unified, evidenced by Roberts and the deciding vote. When the banks want it, they get it. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, why is it every election year the Bilderbergs meet uh, here in uh, Chantilly, Virginia? They met in 08, they met this year, 12 um, last time, uh, it was strongly rumored Obama and Hillary Clinton were at. That oh, they meeting. were there, yeah. Yeah, and and uh, this year we uh, there's a, it's a thought that Romney was there. Uh, so you know, again, uh, why do they why do they always have these meetings uh, in, in in the Dallas Airport area uh, every election year? You got to wonder, uh, you know, what what you know the Greek islands aren't good enough anymore. <laughs> no, they want to be able to get all the politicians in uh, quietly. That's clear for a real uh, power broker meeting. Uh, Wayne, I want to now talk about other things that uh, you're looking at. What are you investigating right now? What's what's next? What's what do you think we should be uh, watching for? Well, I'm um, I'm going to be going over to uh, Asia uh, soon. I, I'm very concerned about this U.S. military buildup in the in the Pacific region because it looks to me. Uh, with uh, these uh, naval encounters now between Chinese uh, vessels and the uh, vessels of Vietnam and the Philippines, the U.S. trying to get back its bases in Kamran Bay in Vietnam, 
uh, Subic Bay in the Philippines. Uh, looks like the U.S. Uh, has uh, some uh, goals to uh, have some sort of military confrontation with China. And it, 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 it's called the, um, basically, it, it's, uh, it, it, we're circling China, except for Russia. We've got uh, now assets, military intelligence assets in Mongolia and the Himalayas and Nepal and India, Mayan. Myanmar just opened up Burma, uh, Thailand, Southeast Asia, Philippines, uh, uh, Taiwan, Japan. And, and if we think we're going to take on China, uh, we've had at least one Chinese general a few years ago who said, look, you, you, you want to take us on, be prepared to sacrifice Los Angeles and San Francisco. We can hit both those cities with our intercontinental ballistic missiles. Well, I mean, and of course, China's smart. got over 6,000 front companies with their people everywhere. And I mean, imagine what NATO and the, and, and the narcotics traffickers, that's what NATO is obviously on record. Imagine what they can do with a thousand jihadis in Libya. I mean, they've got tens of thousands. It's, I mean, as you know, working with the NSA, but it's not a secret. They've got tens of thousands of special forces who have been deep infiltrated 10, 20, 30 years in the entire infrastructure of this company, uh, of this uh, country. They're not going to have to uh, pump, uh, you know, viruses in from China. Uh, they've got loyal people everywhere. Think what Israel's been able to do with their infiltrators. Uh, I mean, my gosh, the globalists, just like Hitler with Russia or, or, or Napoleon, are just power mad. 40 to 1 bets, Corzine, uh, you know, the 888 deal, trying to start a war with Russia to test them. Russia rolls in missiles, Medvedev and Putin. I, I went back and looked, even during the Cold War, the Russians weren't threatening to nuke us, they were just building up. I mean, I think the world is more dangerous than it was in 1961, you know, during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And you've got this lazier elite in Washington that are just so hubris filled. And I get people are like, well, be patriotic, get behind the war. We're run by bankers. You know, I don't like the Russians or the communist Chinese, but they're not over here running everything. And then the globalists have let them infiltrate everything and let them have 98% of rare earth minerals, let them have Panama Canal. Maybe that's the banker plan. Maybe they've got a deal we don't know about. Maybe they're shoving the military into something we're supposed to lose. I mean, we know the globalists hate this country. I mean, it's just, it, look, the stratagem is madness. I mean, I think the globalists have deceived themselves with all these gambits. I, I, I'm ranting here, but I study geopolitical systems. I study history. I live it. I talk to the top experts constantly, and I look at this elite program, and I think they've gone crazy like Caligula or Nero or Hitler. I think they've gone nuts. What do you say? Well, I do. And, and you know, we had this special forces general over our, our general in Korea. He resigned because he apparently slipped up and said we were parachuting commandos in, into North Korea. Well, if we're parachuting commandos into North Korea, what are we doing in China? I mean, North Korea is like, a, that is a very closed country. Uh, and um, we sit now see stirrings in the streets in various towns in China. We know what George Soros has been up to with the National Endowment for Democracy, these other... CIA front. They're NGOs publicly and trying Russia. to overthrow Russia. Why are they poking yeah. all these people? I, it, it's insanity. And that's what I want to really find out what's going on, on over in Asia by talking to the people there. Uh, you know, Obama's putting Marines in Australia and, you know, new bases. Uh, one, one on Christmas, I, uh, Cocos Keeling Islands. You got to go in an atlas to find these places in the Indian Ocean, the Cocos Keeling Islands. But he wants to put a base there. We've already got one in Diego Garcia. So what's the end game here? Why the military buildup? Is is he insane enough to, uh, to take on, uh, uh, you know, China? Uh, even MacArthur uh, knew that, that you don't do that. You know, you don't get in a land war uh, with the Chinese in Asia. And uh, obviously, uh, but look, Obama's, he's a, he's a, he's a, a creature of the CIA. Uh, the CIA has not produced many military uh, wizards over the years. As a matter of fact, they've gotten us in some of the most wars we've ever been in because the Pentagon had to go in after the CIA, you know, overthrew governments. Look at Iran uh, and, and other places uh, where the CIA's uh, uh, fingerprints and uh, their mud tracks are all over the place. Uh, the military's had to go in and clean up a lot of this. So I'm afraid that maybe it's we're seeing that again with this military buildup in Asia. 
uh, take on. Uh, and don't uh, forget, China. they just sent a part of a fleet into the Mediterranean to menace uh, Syria. Give us your take on that. I mean, this is just getting, and, and they're publicly using Al Qaeda and now admitting that and saying, well, Al Qaeda is good if they're yeah. attacking Assad. It's just, it's crazy. Where we're using Al Qaeda in uh, Syria, we use them in Libya. Uh, there's reports now that we're using them in Sudan to overthrow the government there after we split the southern half off and gave them their independence. Uh, Al Qaeda, as I always said, it's a, it's a construct. It's, it's, it's the old Mujahideen uh, CIA support network, the Saudi money. Um, uh, look, the, 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 the other thing I want to mention there is, I, I reported this the other day, there, uh, there's reports that King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, who's 87 years old, is seriously ill. Some reports have him as clinically dead and only being kept alive on artificial, uh, by artificial means. Now, what's going to happen? We've got the crown prince, Prince Nayef, who succeeded when the, the crown prince died a couple weeks ago. But there's a power struggle to see who will be the next crown prince. And the um, uh, Saudis have been having it both ways for so many years. They pay off al-Qaeda uh, not to attack the kingdom. But, uh, you know, then they try to act like they're, you know, involved in this anti-terrorism front that the U.S. has put together. When, in fact, they're funding these al-Qaeda rebels and these Wahhabists in Syria. They did it in Libya. The United Arab Emirates get to far same same situation uh, so uh, it's and i another... should add they have another fleet going into the persian gulf right now i was also saying the mediterranean uh, i mean it is just wild so so we understand these policies aren't for the united states even if we were going to be a cold-blooded empire this is for the banksters did you see the cnbc clip where they admit and, and they go through four guests and say foreign mega banks are setting up world government and we're their slaves and they go oh it's good to be slaves i mean now this coming out i mean do the bankers really think they can just run around with bravada and chutzpah filled you know, uh, behavior and just the whole world's going to bow down to them. Well, I think they do. And uh, now we have Barclays in England. Barclays Bank is under investigation. Uh, that, that was always one of the flagship banks of, of uh, Great Britain. Uh, we, we had the French police uh, uh, searching uh, former President Sarkozy's home and office uh, on some uh, financial chicanery. Uh, well, we no, no, no. When I saw that, I thought of you. You said when the Libya thing started, and then later I got to give you credit. I saw some news admitted that they had been involved getting Gaddafi to invest in French deals, and that he'd financed yeah. much of Sarkozy, and that Sarkozy was involved in being blackmailed to go after uh, uh, Libya because they were going to use that information on him. Remember saying that? I think Tarpley said that too. Yeah, absolutely, and that's uh, that's right. And so. Uh, you know, maybe, just maybe, you know, wiser uh, heads are, are, are prevailing now. And, and Frau Merkel in Germany, uh, you know, I mean, I think uh, uh, they're all looking at her and, you know, what, what's this woman? Is she like the, the spawn of Adolf Hitler? I mean, the way she's treating other countries in Europe, like, well, you know, just throw your people off the pensions, make your old people die because they can't get their, uh, their their prescription drugs. Yeah, the head of the IMF, they wrote the laws in Europe where EU bureaucrats are exempt from taxes. Folks can look this up. And then they're saying, it doesn't matter. I don't care about Greece. And then some political correct thing about, I care about Africans more. I mean, these people are totally g disconnected, giving us classical Marie Antoinette statements. And we had David Cameron come out to the He's going to do everything possible to stop Greeks from immigrating to Britain. Well, aren't they both in the EU? Isn't there supposed to be these borderless, uh, this borderless union? Uh, I think what we're seeing here is the collapse, and it's probably a good thing, the collapse of the European Union. I think that was a bank, uh, banker uh, contrived uh, a thing from the get-go. When you look at the people that put the, together the original European sure, it's Bilderberg. But let's go back here yeah. briefly. I mean, finish your point on that. But uh, uh, that's intriguing. Why do you think they're going after Sarkozy? I mean, he's gone now. Uh, they've handed it over, you know, to Holland. Why do you think they're they're going after little Sarkozy? Because Sarkozy, when he was president, used these uh, used the French police and the, and the courts uh, and the uh, Justice Department to go after his political enemies. Part of this is, you know, uh, turnaround is fair play. Sarkozy 
He went after former Pre uh, Prime Minister Dominique de Villepin, trying to put him in jail. He, he, he really was the uh, brains behind going after former his predecessor. Jacques Chirac. And he got so, caught. Hey. He got caught tweeting earlier, and then had to admit British intelligence was sicked on Dominique Strauss Kahn to set him up with that hooker. Right, and Strauss Kahn. I have a story up today. You know, um, uh, apparently some French uh, publications, a tabloid in particular, uh, saying he's he's got some marital problems. But I also picked up from some sources in in France and Paris that uh, Strauss Kahn's been offered. Uh, a, a post that would afford him diplomatic immunity. Uh, Bibi Netanyahu has said he could make him the head of the Israel Central Bank or Minister of Finance, uh, which would give him immunity from any sort of uh, prosecutions or civil lawsuits that he's facing in New York and other places. Yeah, you've got the D.C. bureaucrats saying diplomatic immunity, the U.N., the Vatican, Israel. I mean, gee, can't we just make Texas like that? I'm from Texas. I'm above the law. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they, if the, we have the Republic of Texas, you could be the uh, Texas ambassador to Washington. You would have diplomatic immunity under the Vienna Convention. That'd um, be kind of nice, uh, but of course, I don't want to yeah. commit a bunch of crimes, so I guess it's kind of worthless. <laughs> But it'd still be kind of cool to have it. My, I, I am God. You are, you know. No, no but it's uh, getting serious here. It's it's outrageous. I say get rid of diplomatic immunity. It's been expanded. And ex you saw where they want to give carbon traders and NM Rothschild diplomatic immunity on their carbon trades. Did you see that? I'm not surprised. I mean, these people. Uh, this whole carbon trade thing was what a what a ruse that was. A, a real scam. Um, you know, they're they're actually selling uh, air. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I mean, I used to say, when are they going to start taxing the air? I mean, they're selling, selling air. They're already selling water. Uh, you know, part of that whole Libya intervention was, you know, there's some huge aquifers uh, under the Libyan desert in the Sahara. And, of course, the first two companies that went in there to grab uh, th those aquifers, and, you know, Qaddafi built a huge uh, irrigation system, brought that water up to the coast. Uh, were the, the two French, uh, big French water companies. Sure, including. he was building Africa up. He was a major hub of real development through ego or whatever reason, good or bad. You know, he's definitely better than Al-Qaeda. Uh, and so now they're tearing it up, putting him in debt, bringing in the forced inoculations, and are going to use that as an invasion hub for AFRICOM. We predicted it all in the Obama deception three and a half years ago. Now, we did... This is just now breaking, Wayne. We actually have footage from inside the Ascension... Uh, of the new leader of Saudi Arabia. This is a big deal. The satellite feed just came in. Uh, we're going to go to this feed and uh, get your take on it. Uh, but th uh, this is happening right now uh, with the uh, king of Saudi Arabia and the new crown prince. Uh, let's go take you now. It's ready. Go to that live feed right now. Here it is. That Hillary? I have thirty thousand drones. Uh, take your vaccines. Uh, oh wait! There goes the king of Saudi Arabia. Life extension didn't work too well. Mm, there's the new leader. David Rockefeller. Oh. Oh. Okay, that feed cut out, but that, that, it's rare that they actually have a feed into uh, the Saudi Arabian Royal Supreme uh, Chambers. Um, what did you think of that? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's amazing because, you know, the, the, uh, <laughs> the Royal Palace in Riyadh is uh, harder to get into uh, than, than the Vatican. Uh, so it's amazing uh, 
see that uh, footage. <laughs> they are handsome creatures, though, royalty. <laughs> well, they all gathered for the Queen's Jubilee recently in London. So, uh, you know, I remember what King Farouk uh, once said, that uh, eventually the only kings and queens in the world would be the, the ones you find in any deck of playing cards and uh, the King of England. You're right. In fact, since you mentioned that, uh, guys, pull up uh, the uh, uh, Skeksy Feast. And we actually do, just for you, Wayne, so we have a, uh, uh, this is a recording of the Diamond Jubilee, uh, of one of the feasts uh, that they were having. And so I thought we would show this. Um, but, but, I mean, getting away from the sarcasm, yes, for the New York Times, says I think that was, a, that was from the Dark Crystal. It's a, it's a joke, but it's not really a joke because that's how these people act. How ridiculous is it to have all this so-called royalty wearing crowns and what is it about the entitled uh, elite class that stole their money or got it off government bailouts or whatever, that they love going to award ceremonies and wearing crowns and stuff? You know, I've been offered a lot of big awards and, you know, taken a few. But I, one time I was already going through California shooting a video, well, it's for Bohemian Grove infiltrating, and I was given an award. And, I, and I, for journalism, I went and took it. So I was driving through. I was like, well, that'll work. I'm actually there. But I just don't get this need they have to, like, this conspicuous consumption and the rest of it. I mean, a lot of it is that th th they're mental midgets, but good people have a blind spot to them because we're not like them, and so that's why they're able to dominate. Your comments on that before we show the uh, the Queen of England uh, Diamond Jubilee feast. Well, they they you know it's still the old divine reign of kings. They feel that their power, their their political power, is ordained by God, and. Uh, it's hard to get these people to think otherwise. It, even in the 21st century. You found the uh, uh, Skeksy. Start over. They had the Skeksy feast. I wasn't ignoring you. Start over with the divine rule of kings. Everything else. Start over. Yeah. Well, you know, these these kings and queens believe that their, their authority comes through the divine right of kings. It's a very ancient thing where God ordains uh, them to rule on his behalf on, on earth. And... You know, it's hard to get these these people out of this mindset. Uh, uh, even if they have prime elected prime ministers, like in Great Britain, but uh, I think uh, you know, with the, what's the people are just getting more and more upset seeing them live that way. You know, this guy in Spain is in Africa shooting elephants. Uh, um, the King of Spain, Juan Carlos. Uh, I mean. You know, and, and the people in Spain are losing their pensions and losing their social security. And then they see him running down to Africa and shooting elephants. I mean, uh, this, uh, you know. Spain well, what's even was worse is Prince Philip and, and puts out stuff so does Charles saying, try not to take a hot shower. It, it hurts the carbon. To you, but but then they have literally hundreds of giant palaces, hundreds, and, and and dozens of jets and private trains and huge yachts the size of ocean liners. And then they're like, "Let's take a hot bath." And people are like, "Oh, thank you, sir." In fact, in fact, we have one more clip here of not the diamonds you believe, but I think David Icke may be right. These are the creatures, the entities. Uh, well, this is the Queen of England uncloaked. She she turned off her cloaking device, and uh, we actually have footage. Uh, she's the one in the middle here, Wayne. We actually have footage of the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, and the groom of the stool. Here it is. <laughs> Hold on, here's the queen. I'll show it to her. There's the queen right there. Oh, damn, I'm lovely. Oh, she's so wonderful. I'll get a plate of her and hang it on the wall. Oh, oh, there's Prince Charles. There's Philip. Rotten. Yeah. Yeah. And they inject people with vaccines so they're like brain damaged and servile. Some of them deliver a bowl of food here in a minute. It seems to me that Delphine has escaped. Huh? No Delphine ever escaped from my deadly garden. Here come the vaccine heads. And they've been putting body scanners. We're gonna bring them more food here in a minute. Oh, there's the queen. It's her jubilee. Oh.
Oh, that's enough. There's the Jubilee. Uh, isn't that nice, Wayne? Oh, absolutely. You know, I would note that the uh, Jamaica, which uh, still has the Queen as their head of state, is finally, uh, it became independent in 62. They're finally going to offer a republic and get rid of the Queen as their head of state. It's, it's amazing that Jamaica can do that, but Australia, Canada, and New Zealand still uh, have uh, this person uh, who's many, many miles away, thousands of miles away as their head of state. Um, and uh, maybe they'll, you know, Jamaica now can take the queen off their currency. Maybe I think they should put Bob Marley on the Jamaican currency. But Good uh, idea. Well, Wayne Madsen, thank you for joining us uh, today. This is big news. We were able to give you a feed inside uh, the king of Saudi Arabia's bedchamber. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I know you're on Skype with us. You couldn't see it because we don't send you video back. But, but we'll send you a clip of this. And I think you'll enjoy seeing how the better, better elites live. Absolutely. Good to be with you, Alex. And uh, people, if they want the book, waymatsreport.com and click on the, the, the link and, and get it that way. You bet. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon, my friend. Okay. Good to be with you. And now for the Declaration of Independence. Let's look at a few excerpts of this document on the eve of July 4th. By the way, we do have a special tape show with some exclusive new information and also some best of tomorrow on the 4th of July, uh, which the globalists absolutely hate. This is from the U.S. National Archives and Records Administration. And I'm just going to read some excerpts uh, from it. In Congress, July 4th, 1776. That's why we have July 4th. I know they teach you it's about drinking beer and worshiping imperial wars, but I'll assure you folks, well, we covered earlier in the night how they're saying freedom lovers and those that love the Constitution are terrorists. So this is Terrorist Day. July 4th is Terrorist Day. The unanimous declaration of 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth a separate and equal station to which the law of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare their cause, which impels them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Ninety plus percent don't like the TSA, they don't stop. Congress has a 9% approval rating. They don't care. They just hire more SWAT teams, more tanks. They know they don't have our consent, so they're arming against us. That whenever, now listen, this is the terrorism here. This is why the FEMA and others teach it's terrorism. They tell police that the Declaration of Independence is bad because they're anti-American. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. In fact, guys, can you pull up is the Declaration of Independence terrorist? The BBC had a debate in Philadelphia last year, and they had a bunch of U.S. lawyers agree, yes, America is terroristic. Government is God. I'm not joking. We covered earlier where they demonize it. In fact, I have FBI training manuals where they say, if they make frequent references to the U.S. Constitution, that's a terrorist. We'll see, people that aren't terrorists are terrorists to terrorists. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. That's right to revolt in common law. And to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as that shall seem most likely to affect the safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should, should not be changed for light or transient causes. And accordingly, all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object, invinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, what is America turning into? It is their right and it is their duty. Thomas Jefferson wrote this, by the way, with the consent of those uh, involved to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies. We've patiently suffered as well. 
as the government ships guns to Mexico to blame the Second Amendment and blows up Oklahoma City and stages 9-11. It's not the government. It's the foreign banks, as they brag, that have captured us. They brag in their arrogance as they make 40 to 1 bets with people's private bank accounts that they captured us in Europe. Well, they can go to Hades. Did you guys find the BBC article? It's uh, all over. Just type in, is the, is the Declaration of Independence illegal? Or is the Declaration of Independence terrorist? And uh, it uh, breaks it all down. There it is. InfoWars is the top link. We can give folks a document cam shot. But then BBC News Magazine. Then click on the link, and it will take people directly to it. There you go. Click on it. That's why we save part of articles so we can prove that it indeed happened. And is the Declaration of Independence illegal? And there are American sympathizers and globalist traitors who want to be slaves of the queen. You see it all over the news, worshiping it. Uh, and they want to go back under it. Let's continue. And to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former system of government. And then they go through a list of the chain of abuses. And I challenge you to read the long train of abuses, the term they use, our forebearers, to look at what's happening today. It's exactly the same, but in some cases, worse. You know, the king hadn't thought of putting cancer viruses in vaccines and giving them to people. They would just give the end ends and people blankets from folks that had just died of smallpox. And then the British manual will say, make sure it's fresh. All right, let's continue here. Um, it just goes through it all, and I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to read a few here. Um, he says, he has erected a multitude of new offices, all these new bureaucracies, and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out our substance. Exactly what's going on today. He has, uh, talking about the King of England, he has affected to render the military independent and superior to the civil power. That's martial law. That's the military above the law. That's the military involved domestically. That's the police saying they're immune. For quartering large bodies of armed troops among us. You're not supposed to have military on the streets. Same thing today. For imposing taxes on us without our consent. All these regulations, fines, fees. Obama can't pass a law, so he just says executive order. For imposing taxes on us without consent. For depriving us, in many cases, of the benefits of trial by jury. IRS courts, family courts, all of them. For suspending our own legislatures. Well, they just tell the Congress and others they don't count now. The UN's the boss. And declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. The executive, the UN, all of it, just doing whatever they want. He has constrained our fellow citizens, taken capital on the high seas, to bear arms against their country. That's conscripting people and making them fight. That's like the draft. Uh, or uh, NDAA saying they'll kill you if they want. Read it. It's the Declaration of Independence. That's only a small part of it. This is July 4th. This is America. This is coffin nails to tyranny. This be treason in a world run by tyrants. Those that attack this document, they are the ones involved in treason. They are the scallywags. They are the enemy. FEMA and the foreign British crown and the New World Order and their system of fraud. That's the enemy. There lies the enemy. Not our George Washington. Not our forebearers they demonize 24-7. All right, that's my July 4th message. Incredible job to the crew. Don't forget dreams from my real father. Globalists really hate this film. Blackout on this. They're trying to ban advertising it as you heard when we had on the director last week. Get it at Infowars.com or Infowarshop.com is the direct URL or 888-253-3139 so that we can continue to fund our operation, get more reporters and do a better job because we know we're only alive once. We're in the clutch. God's put us in the position to be able to challenge these people. You've put us in the position supporting us. So spread the word about PrisonPlanet.tv, the 15-day free trial, the books, the videos, the water filters at InfoWarsShop.com, your email list, your Twitter, your Facebook. We're getting the signal out because of you. And we realize what you've invested in us in time and energy and trust. So we are breaking our backs to bring you this information. All right, I'm Alex Jones signing off. Have a great terrorist day, anti-slavery day, July 4th.